All right, here we go. Fredo Bang, welcome back. What's up? Welcome back, man. We're out here in New Orleans right now. Your home state. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You know? Feel feels very organic. <laughs> you know, doing it together again. Yeah. Okay. Um, we got a lot to talk about today. But first of all, since our last interview, the YNW Melly trial happened. Yeah. And it ended in a mistrial. Yeah. When you heard that, what did you think? The mistrial? Yeah, because you, you and YW Melly have always been close. Right. In fact, I think we talked about this before. He went to your, to your house right after the whole incident that got him, you know, that he was caught up in. So you guys are real close. You guys have songs together, everything else like that. And did you follow the trial as, as it was happening? Oh, um, yeah. Here and there. I, I had to. So they kept tagging my name and stuff on Twitter. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> when you find out it was a mistrial, how'd you feel? Um, I felt bad because I, I didn't, uh, I know a lot of people who have been in a situation like that waiting years and years and years and I was just. That, by the way, not a mistrial, hung jury. Yeah, hung, hung yeah. Hung jury, let me just be specific yeah, about that. Yeah. Right, uh, meaning that uh, I think a few people basically disagreed. Right, like right. three people said not guilty. Yeah, because it got to be ones, unanimous. Has to be unanimous, exactly. Yeah, I just felt bad for him because I know you're ready to get it over with and you know what I'm saying, and. Yeah, I mean, the retrial is supposed to happen in February. And they hit him with, both, with uh, more charges. Yeah. Uh, jury tampering. And uh, I remember I had 1090 Jake on my show, and I guess jury tampering has a life sentence associated with it if he gets convicted of that. Yeah. So it's just a mess. Is the death penalty still on the table with him? I think so. Sheesh. Sheesh. Have you guys talked? Like, when's the last time you guys have actually talked? Um, we haven't talked in a minute because they stripped him of all his phone p privileges and stuff. He can't even use the phone. Mm. So it's been a very long time since I haven't talked to him. Meaning what, six months, a year? Uh, shit. I think I haven't got to talk to Miller since, two thousand. like, I want to say late April or May of 2022. Wow. Well, like a year and a half. Yeah, he hasn't been having a phone. Okay, because, well, you dropped a song since our last interview called Free Melly. And you had some lines in there. Yeah. He said, uh, don't want to talk to feds. Probably got my digits. Free Melly. It's been love since the beginning. Talk about subpoena. Tell the lady I ain't. Talk about subpoena. Tell that lady I ain't get it. Yeah. If you ask my name, been in it. I ain't in it. Put some respect on my name when you spit it. So, so talk about that line. What does that mean exactly? <laughs> uh, which part? Well, talk about subpoena. Tell the lady I ain't get it. I ain't get it. So, did you get subpoenaed for that trial? Um, I did, and then but then they had to re-subpoena me. Okay, but, but they ain't never said this. Aha. But I, I, and I remember you you said that you're not cooperating in this thing. Yeah, no, I don't know nothing you don't about know nothing. it. Yeah, I'm really getting dragged into it. I'm really tired of it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like I said, I, whatever I, I say, I'm at, at the house eating McDonald's with my kids. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just being a dad right now. I don't got nothing to do with this stuff. How annoying is it? It's very annoying. Cause like, this, ain't, it ain't, this ain't like a regular blog post or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is somebody who life on the line. And my name instead of being tagged to, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's very, very annoying. Right. I mean, because it's not like they're saying you were involved in it on any level. It's just right. that he went to your house after it all happened. So they're trying to drag you somehow into this shit. Yeah. Listen, I can relate. I mean, Keefe D, who just got arrested for the Tupac murder, they were trying to get me to cooperate in that case. They're trying to get all my um, raw footage from the interviews. Yeah. And I'm just not cooperating. Because my whole thing is like, if I'm going to sit down with you, I'm not going to then cooperate if you get in trouble later on. Right. You know, I don't care if I agree or disagree with you. It's like, if you're my guest on the show, I'm not going to cooperate against you. Right. So I just never responded. And I'm like, well, if you guys want to try to get me, but you can't because you can't force me to cooperate. But but I know it's annoying having to deal with that type of shit and everything yeah, else. Yeah, I got CRP. What's that? Courtroom phobia. Oh, uh, I, <laughs> courtroom phobia. I feel yeah, you. I smell a courtroom. I just get sick. I get to shake it. You know, I get to sneeze. And all the time. <laughs> Shit. Uh, 
Yeah, man. I think everyone gets that. Yeah, man. Wants to be in the courtroom. I went to I went to court twenty four times for my own case. I don't twenty four times before I got my time. They made me go to court twenty four times. Damn. You and Melly have a song called Brazy. Brazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is such a great song. Thank you. Which is such a great song. Like I was listening to it over and over again. Like this morning, when I was preparing for the interview. When did that song come together? Uh, so that was a song that Melly had been did. Uh. And he couldn't get cleared because they had a sample. So what I had, what I did was, I had my engineers take the uh, song, take the sample out, redo the beat, um, and we rearranged some lyrics and stuff like that, freshened it up, and I went back and forth with him. Okay, were you in the studio when you guys put that together? Nah, not together. He already he already had the song made. He just couldn't put it out. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah. Aha. Uh -huh. But what do you think? Like, is your greatest memory? Uh, of Melly just hanging out. Oh, man. Shit. Really, I remember me and Miller. It's probably the time I met Kanye. I met Kanye with him. Okay, because they have a song together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's how I met Kanye. I don't know. Miller a character. Miller, Miller is a different type of person. You got to... I guess I know people who go through stuff in life, and I can see the beauty in, in certain people. You know what I'm saying? And so... I got a thing for seeing the beauty, the beauty in, in crazy people. I mean, he's super creative. Definitely. It's like when Melly came out, he didn't sound like anybody. Yeah. It was like you knew this was a whole different type of artist. Kind of almost like, almost reminds me of a young thug right. in a way. You know what I mean? Not that they sound alike, but yeah. it's like it's like a the totally crazy. different type of sound. Yeah, when he record, he, rec he re records like for a minute straight. Like he gonna, he gonna take for a minute. He gonna do another take for a minute, then another take without stopping. Then he gonna chop from from uh, three verses and make his verse. That's the first time I have seen it. Yeah, man. Um, what really bothered me is that after the hung jury, you would think that they would give him a bail or a bond. Yeah, nah, I you knew, know what I'm saying. I knew they probably wasn't. Huh? Yeah. That's why what I've seen all my life, I ain't never seen him give a. Anybody a bill. Once they deny it and say they ain't giving you one, especially on the serious crimes like that. Just becomes permanent. Yeah. Well, I hope he beats it. Me too. I, I hope he, he beats it. I mean, you know. So, so, I mean, uh, I feel like sometimes you got just had the had right lawyers to get the right message across. You know what I'm saying? Right, because he got locked up what year? Uh, 2019. 2019. He's been locked up for four years. Yeah. That is crazy. Yeah. yeah, I think these days, uh, I feel like the courts and system get caught up on, on trying to convict people so much and just get like justice for cases that they forget about it being uh, guilty beyond reasonable doubt. Everybody just forget about that sometimes, you know what I'm saying? Because right, he's innocent right now, technically. Supposed to be. Right. <laughs> but innocent no, until nobody gets treated guilty. like they're innocent, <laughs> like they're supposed to be. Well, especially you know if you saying? got no bond, yeah. I mean, you're right. basically guilty. Yeah. You know? You're doing time. And you're that's why, time. and that's where the mentality becoming of people like taking pleas or copping out because, all right, cool, I'd have been in jail four or five years. And here I go to trial, I might as well just take some time. Because if I beat it down, this five years I did was a waste. You know what I'm saying? That, that's it's a, not like you get it back. Yeah, that's a mentality that people, some people get. Yeah. I mean, I, I just read a story about this dude who he just did like 50 years for a murder. And then they just found out he and didn't do it. They just found out he didn't do it. I feel like he should get a free murder for that. He should be able to just kill somebody. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Maybe like the DA or something. Like, you know what I mean? Like the DA or, you know, the prosecutor or something. Like, you know, after all that, because he, he's done the time for a murder. Man, ain't no amount of money or anything you get to get that time back or make you feel right. It's, no, it's over with. No, 50 years, I, I can't even, I can't even comprehend that, man. Uh, I was gone for two and a half, and I felt like it was a whole different world when I came home. <laughs> so... 50. 50, they ain't even have cell phones out. Yeah, 50 years. I mean, let me think. It's 2023. So you were, you've been gone since the 70s? Right? Uh -huh. You've been gone since like, what, 77? Something like that? 
Michael Jackson was still alive. Michael Jackson hadn't even hit yet. Thriller was not out yet. Right. He was still at Jackson 5. There was no internet. Even the brick phone wasn't out yet. Yeah. Like disco, bell bottoms. Yeah, you you, you don't even know what you're walking into. That's scary. Well, I, how much were you, weren't you facing like 40 years at one point? Yeah, all together. 40 years. How does that weigh down on you, 40 years? Because you were in your 20s at that point, right? 20 what? Uh, well, I, I went in at 18. I came out. At 20. 18? Yeah. You were a teenager. Thinking in the worst case, you're getting out at 58. <laughs> yeah. I'm 50. I'm not even that old. You know, I'm not even the age that you would have gotten out at. Yeah. But what does that do to an 18 year old's head? I don't know. I guess it just make you very angry. Uh, it's like a stressing anger. You know what I'm saying? So you tend to lash out. You're fighting in there. You just, I don't know. You just, it's a lot of different emotions. You know what I'm saying? Some days you just give up. Some days you be like, damn, this shit breaking me. You want to cry, but you can't. You feel me? Then some days you be like, fuck it. I ain't going to let it break me. You know what I'm saying? It's just, I don't know. Did you have a girl coming in and then she left you? Yeah, at the end. At the end? Didn't that kind of break you to a nah, certain degree? No, nah, that definitely did break me, but I, I found somebody who helped me. We made her still cool, too. Really? Yeah. Well, I, it took me like three, four years to forgive her, but we cool. You guys are friends now? Do you have any... Any types of relations when you got out? <laughs> a little bit. You get some of that revenge sex? You know what I'm saying? A little, like, bit. Uh, like. a little bit. Nah, that's, a, that's somebody I hold dear in my life because regardless of her leaving, she did was she was the only thing I had. You know what I'm saying? It's just I feel like uh, I feel like it's like a, with a lot of women, they tend to try to be perfect for us. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people, you know, for the, like Casanova two times, he got locked up. And this yeah. girl's like, oh, I'm going to stay with you. I think he got like 15 years or something yeah. like that. And it's like, it sounds good in the beginning. Right. But, you know, if the girl is young, she's pretty. Yeah. Shout out to Kaz, too. Right. You fuck with Kaz? Yeah, I fuck with Kaz. I did, I did one of his first interviews. Cool dude. Cool dude. Uh, got caught up in what sounds like someone else's bullshit. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's crazy how quickly you can get caught up. Like like you know, like Honeycomb Brazy. He just got locked up again for a gun charge, and I remember he said something like he just had like a fake ass security dude with him, and I guess like one of the guys that was with him that was I guess from what I understand that was supposed to be his security had a gun on him that wasn't registered, so everyone in the car went to jail went to jail over that one gun that wasn't even Brazy's gun. You see what I'm saying? And he violated his his parole or what you see what I'm saying? Like you see how that and it's like and I, and I carry armed security. I'm thinking like I could get caught up <laughs> like that. This is why yeah. I like to just use off duty cops or you know what I'm saying? Or former police department dudes. Cause I know that they're like a hundred percent if anything happens, they're going to take it. All right. You know what I'm saying? Pause. Well, they're going to take the gun charge. Yeah, but just you didn't specify yeah, I know, I know, that. Take that, take that. <laughs> oh, man. Well, you know, uh, in that song, uh, Free Melly, there's a line in there. Uh, he got more money, he got more plaques, but I've been that before this rap. I turn a N-word into a pack, and he go, something, that's a fact. Uh, and he can vouch that as a fact. He can vouch that as a fact. Who is that about? Uh, <laughs> oh, what do you want to say? Okay. Because people are saying it's that, but yeah. since you don't say the name, then I guess it's just... I mean, happen. I just, I don't know. I get tired of, you know, with my career, bro, I'll be get, sometimes, and that, no offense to you, because I know you, you know, you just doing your job, but yeah. I get tired of getting asked about that dude sometimes. Yeah, you know I feel what I'm saying? You. But I it's cool. You. But I mean, yeah, you know. Is what it is. He know me. Yeah. Let's switch gears for a second. Proud of his success, by the way. You know, you're, you're proud of NBA proud. and boy success. 
Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, he signed like what, a hundred million dollar deal or something, something huge like that. Yeah. And 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 you know, I feel like especially um, coming from my way, I feel like if anybody could do it, I feel like I could do it too. So of that course. just gives that just gives me motivation to see something being done. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Well, and the last time we talked, uh, there was that toy drive that you did with a uh, NBA uh, OG three, mm-hmm. and yeah, it seemed like everything is a, kind of a a cool a cool place. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Well, let's switch gears for a second. John Morant, you're a big basketball fan. Yeah. It was funny because the Grizzlies were in my hotel. For, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. they, they were just in town. Yeah, they fucked up my parlays out of there. Oh, did they? Yeah. I just uh, I actually met Derrick Rose for the first time. For real? Yeah, we chopped it up. He told me he was a fan. He played? Literally? I don't know if he played, but he was there at the hotel. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And they beat New Orleans by one point. By one point. By one point. One what was your parlay? <laughs> <laughs> More than I a point, need, I assume. I needed New Orleans to win. I had like a seven league, and New Orleans was my last league. Okay. But John Moran is back. Right. And he did a dance at the end when he scored with the and you know people are saying oh it was a gun dance he was like you know because you know he got suspended over the gun shit but in fact what they said it was actually a new orleans dance yeah. for uh rocky hips you know what i'm talking about nah. yeah well i mean you're from baton rouge yeah but you know it's well, like, yeah but it, it's, it's a new orleans dance called rocky hips and that that's what he was doing and they actually pulled up videos from Right. The artist doing that dance and everything else like that. What's your take on John Morant? John Morant. Well, I know he's a big NBA fan. <laughs> That's how he got caught up last time. Yeah, he, he In fact, I think he's lost. He sacrificed more for NBA young boy than any person <laughs> in the world. But he not. lost like $100 million rocking out to, to young boy in that car and pulled out a pistol right oh, there yeah. on, on oh, sure was. Oh shit! He a good at he a very good athlete and stuff like that. I'm more of a Durant guy myself. Kevin Durant. Yeah. He, Durant. Kevin Durant's actually a Vlad TV fan. Sniper. He 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 DM me. Was like, oh man, you you the best to do it. I watch your shit every day. Is that your favorite uh, basketball player? Yeah, absolutely. Over LeBron. As far as my favorite. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Because people are saying that. And no offense, to LeBron. I follow LeBron, but I just follow. Well, LeBron's older now. Yeah, I just, I just, no, I just followed up like Kevin Durant since I was little. I ain't really pay too too much attention with LeBron when I was younger. Fair enough. Yeah, I mean it's a it's a different age, you know. LeBron, LeBron's kind of near. Yeah, he older than I thought they were the same. Age. Let's look it up. Hold on. Uh, damn, LeBron. A LeBron is thirty eight. Kevin Durant age. 35. Okay, yeah. Three years. Yeah. Not a huge difference, but still a little bit younger. Well, Because people are saying that Ja, the ja Morant is going to be the face of the NBA after LeBron retires. <sighs> Do you agree? Because he came back on fire. Yeah. I ain't going to lie. That, Russ be showing a lot of favoritism, too. What do you mean? With him. Oh, they, they give him, they, they give him become, calls. They and stuff get like some that. crazy calls sometimes. Really? Not, not taking nothing away from his skills, though. He's very not, he's a very nice player. But I don't know. I just not saying that I'm anybody, but me personally to put him at the top of the NBA. I just had to see a little bit more. Okay, fair enough. Because it, it, it just got players out there who just do more consistently. Like I say, he just coming back. You know, what I'm saying I only paid attention to him the whole last year. But I got like Shy Alexander. He putting up 30, 35 every night. You know what I'm saying? Like consistently. You know, we got uh, who else? Shit. Motherfucking got uh, Jamie Jamie uh, from the Heat coming out the bench dropping 20. Yeah. We got Austin Reeves every, every, coming out the bench dropping 25. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Him, him or Jamie, I think, going to have six man this year. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Got Chet Holgram. He, go, he cutting up first year, you know, really. Like, you got a, you got a lot of faces out there. You got a lot of talent out there. So, I just feel like just to be the face, he got, I feel like he just got a little ways to go. Well, you know, like I said. Uh, and to be the face, you got to be able to, you know, carry yourself in a certain manner of the, you know what I'm saying, to to be a part of their, their bar, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, he, uh, 
Cause they'll stop you yeah, <laughs> eternally. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he, he did a lot of dumb shit. Yeah, Le- he, Le- he, LeBron wouldn't be where he at. No. Doing that shit. Well, you know, I mean, so some people I think take it more seriously than yeah. others. Yeah. You know, what I'm saying some people just have an obscene amount of natural talent. I feel like in the some in people the, have an obscene amount of of focus. Yeah, in the industry, you got they t- you got a board, and if you don't live up to their expectations, you know what I'm saying? They're gonna keep a little. Muzzle on you sometimes, you know what I'm saying? So, well, well, right. Well, because you know, you got to look at it on a on a macro level, right? Like, most players don't even get to talk to the owners, all right? Because when it comes to the owners, the basketball team is usually a small part of their fortune, all right? You may think that a billion dollar team is a big deal to somebody, but when you're worth like 50 billion, it really isn't. Yeah, you know, I mean, there's some, bombers there's some shit you're just fucking around with, yeah. So, it's just like, oh, I got a team. You know, I could brag to the girls that I got, I own this team. But like, you know, because I have people like, you know, John Sally on my show all the time. And he was just like, even the LeBrons, you know, and the Jordans of the world, like they got to talk to the general manager. Like it's rare that they get to actually talk to the owner of the team. You would think it's not like that, but it really is like that. And then when you talk about the NBA, which is even bigger than any of the owners, they understand that the league itself is bigger than any one player. They're not going to let any player fuck up the billions of dollars that are getting generated all over the world in China and Europe and everything else like that because somebody want to pull out a pistol on IG Live. Like You're fucking up billions of dollars here. I think uh, as men, all of us, we learn differently. Most of us learn by bumping our head and so... I think I think well this time I think he came back with a whole different mentality maybe. Well, he's been on fire since he came back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's been on fire. Like maybe that was just a little bump on the head that he needed to really just okay. I know what I need to do when I'm on camera. I need to be professional when I'm off. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, I mean, we're in New Orleans right now, and if you're talking about the Pelicans, uh, Zion Williamson, who was supposed to be the next coming, yeah, his. Last three years of his contract, they just announced they're no longer guaranteed. Because he gained weight. Gained weight. He got injured. Um, there was the drama with Mariah, you know, the porn chick, yeah. Mariah Mills. You heard about all that? I seen it. I didn't really understand it. It was just a porn chick he was fucking with on the side, and then he announced he was having a baby with his yeah. girl. And then, you know, she caught feelings and started just wild out. Yeah. Um, I mean, what's your take on Zion? Uh, I like Zion. Yeah. Cool, cool. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Zion be tripping sometimes. He be pouting to the bitch and shit sometimes. <laughs> but uh, I guess yeah. he, he just love the sport. You know what I'm saying? I fuck with Zion, though. The Pelicans look the best they didn't look since, since Chris Paul left. I mean, they lost by a point. Yeah. A point. And it was an overtime, it, right? Yeah, yeah the yeah. last one. Yeah, honestly, they're supposed to win one before that, too. So, but they're not everybody else. They've been crushing. I feel like, uh, I mean, playing the once you, I feel like once you play somebody, you you playing the Grizzlies without the John Moran for one. So you gauge them already. Now you got this big ass X factor thrown in. Now you got a whole great. Right, you know and he came saying? back hungry. Like he right. it was a twenty five game suspension. Yeah. So he came back like, oh, he he's got something to prove. Uh, because if he came back playing like shit, they would have just ah, forget it. You know what I'm saying? But then you got uh, Drayvon Green, uh, who is suspended indefinitely right now yeah. for uh, that wild swing. I ain't respect that. I feel like he was trying to seal the file, and he just ended up hitting him. Honestly. Yeah, it looked like an accident. Yeah, that, that didn't look. It didn't look like a real swing. Nah, he choked the shit out of Gobert. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> he choked the shit out of me. Yeah, no, no, no. I mean, he's taken, and he even said it in the press conference after. He goes, listen, like, I, I've admitted to punching people before. Yeah. But he's like, in this case, it really was an accident. Yeah. But you can, you can tell it was more of him trying to sell it, and he just ain't you know, up hitting him. Who the hell was he fought? Nurkic? Uh, I think so, yeah. Fuck him. I missed my fucking parlay last night by two points. So you're going heavy in the gambling right now. Uh, yeah, I enjoy this something. I mean, I had I had turned seven grand to fifty nine. You know, 
Yeah, I mean yeah, that yeah. that's one bet. But if you count it all as a whole, no, I was, I'm up. I'm up. You're I'm up. up. Yeah, yeah. I if know. I was losing, I definitely would not be doing. <laughs> I don't gamble, man. Yeah, I don't gamble. I just. I, I guess because statistically it's designed for you to lose. It's yeah. designed for the, the bookies or whatever. The platform will always have an edge on you. This is why I started investing in stocks. Because statistically, if you put money in the S&P 500, which is the top, you know, the 500 biggest companies in America, at any point over the last 150 years, if you put money in the stock market, if you kept it for more than like, I think, two years... At any point in time, at the very bottom, at the very top, whatever else, if you just keep it in there for at least a couple of years, you're always guaranteed to make money. Every time. Now, that's not to say that that might change in the future, but if you look at 150 years, it's yeah, designed I, for you to win. I need nerves to hit them all the two points. That's what I <laughs> That's what you want. That's what I want. <laughs> What's your take on uh, Dwight Howard? <laughs> He got a lot going on right now. <laughs> I don't know what a lot going on. Now we've talked about this before. Your your dad your dad is gay. Yeah. Do you think Dwight Howard is gay? <laughs> I don't know what Dwight Howard is. Well, he he hasn't denied being gay. Uh, he said he it's said nobody's where, business where he put his wood. Where at. I put my wood at, which makes people more concerned where he put his wood at. I mean, I mean, I really don't be care, but it's just, it's just the stories be just so funny and crazy. Well, yeah, I mean, I mean, if you want to take a log and slap another log, that's you. you yeah, go ahead, that. go ahead. But you know, when someone pops out, when you got oh, the, oh, they didn't say he he posted took some butt, something like that. he he. What they're saying, the lawsuit is saying that him and this gay dude agreed to meet up, and, and get when down. he got there. Some transgender, some forty year old transgender with a, a forty year old trans with a with a, a church wig pops out and a beard pops out and they're saying that they kind of forced him into a three- So it was a three way sword fight. Yeah. Oh three way sword fight. Damn. <laughs> three way sword fight, yeah. I didn't think of it that way, but yeah. Damn. Yeah. Uh, so what I'm saying, what's the loss? Like he still got down. What the he still was with it. I, I, I mean, well, he was saying that they they forced him to do it. Well, they held him down. Well, you know, Dwight Howard's pretty damn big. Oh, like Dwight Howard, that's that's a big, muscular, tall motherfucker. Yeah. Like I I don't think I've seen too many like shoulder spans as big as Dwight's. Right. That, that's not a. It's funny, right? Because it's like you. And you watch like, NBA on TV and those guys don't look that big, but then when you actually stand around them, because you're what, like 6'3 or something? Six. You're six feet? Yeah. Okay, yeah, I'm 6'2. And these guys tower over me. Then they had on a dot, I mean, they had the uh, replays of him poking at other players' butts and stuff. <laughs> I think you just come out. I think you should put a little Nas X and come out gay. Dude. Yeah. Get like a, a rainbow wig or something, and just embrace his gayness. I think who gives a fuck? But I, I mean, honestly, dude, I honestly, I don't, I don't support uh in the closet because they yeah, got some of these dudes who be having homosexuality sex, and then they go hit these women, and then you putting us at risk. You know what I'm saying? Well, I, I interviewed Roy Street, who was his baby mother. Oh yeah, I, I watch, I watch, I watch, I watch. Yeah, and she, she said she had walked a into a crazy, like into a crazy, yeah, carnival party. party. She said every pronoun, every letter of the alphabet was there. Her son was upstairs, and it was just a whole disaster. Yeah, I my, yeah, my thing. I don't give a fuck what you do. Just you know, we well, shouldn't have kids around that shit. No, nah, not at all. For, yeah, first no. and foremost, yeah. I, I had a problem with that. If it was true, of course. Yeah. But hey, man, if you want to be gay, be gay. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, yeah, like, I just think. Uh, for one, I do get tired of people in the comments who just feel like they they uh, comment just worth so much, and I'd be like, who gives a fuck who asked you that? But yeah, the only thing, my only problem with the homosexuality thing is if if you're gonna do it, be open about it, be yourself. Yeah, and, because some and, women are cool with that. Some yeah, kids, some women are cool with having bisexual women, women, men, but I I think if they yeah. don't know. Yeah, and you, that's a whole different. And you raw dog and her, and you know what I'm saying. Yeah, not raw not saying that that's where that come from, but some people just be sick. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
you know. Let's just make it protect all. Let's protect everybody, each other. You know what I'm saying? How's your relationship with your dad these days? Good. My yeah. dad, my dad is just you know he, we we get into it. You know what I'm saying? We get into it over yeah, what? We, we both bipolar. You're, I'm, you're bipolar. I get it from him. Okay, so are you officially bipolar? Nah. You just act <laughs> like it sometimes. Nah, I just be fucked up. Sometimes, fucked up. sometimes I hate people. Sometimes I like them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but that's everybody. But he be tripping. You know, I be tripping. We all be tripping. Because because your dad is is openly gay. Yeah. Right. Have you met his boyfriends and stuff like nah, that? Oh shit, no. No, he keeps that. Nah, whatever he do, they're, they're doing your own time and stuff like that. Well, what what if he got serious? What if he said, hey? I'm nah, 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 this, nah. This is gonna nah, be my nah, future nah. husband. I don't think he would even. I don't think he approached me about that. Like really, that. but he's like, "Hey, this is a, you're, you're my son. This is important to me." How many kids is he? Have? I feel like my dad is, is is bisexual, but you know these days well, bisexual. I mean, you were born, so yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, bisexual is, is 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 still considered, you know, gay yeah. outway. Yeah. So you know what I'm saying. But uh, no, nah, I don't think he. Uh, he probably gonna be pissed off. We even talking about him right now, but uh, sorry. No, nah, you good. It's, what it it's my life. I be telling him it's like yeah, my, it's man, my life. Yeah, you man. came out with I it. I tell know? him I love him, dog. I ain't tripping though. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Of course but, you should. But now, nah, uh, he more private, so I don't even think he'd be on that type of time with me. Fair enough. Fair enough. Well, uh, this is all over the news right now. Uh, Doctor Umar Johnson said that uh. Eminem can't be the greatest of all time because no non-African can ever be the the best at anything African. <laughs> Number one, are you an Eminem fan at all? Yeah. Okay. Do you believe that? Do you believe that a non-black person could be the best at hip hop considering the hip hop I, was originated by? I feel like sometimes older black people can be the most racist people in the world. <laughs> <laughs> that uh like it's just sometimes it's just instilled like we've grown up growing up like you go down to the store or something like oh don't oh, don't don't go talk to that white man so you know what i'm saying it's just how we grow up so they and and especially the older folks you know they grandparents treat them like that so they just grew up with that slave mentality sometimes i mean yeah. you know you can't want to stop racism and then say some racist shit and it's not racist just because you be like Right. Well, they're saying it's not racist; it's prejudice because racism. You need to have a certain amount it's of power same. over some. But it's it's, it's, basic, same it's basically word. the same. Yeah, it's the same damn thing to me. Well, yeah, and Cause I actually because if, if a white person would say that about a black person, oh, he's a racist. Well, yeah, a white person could say, well, you can't have a black person be the king of basketball uh, because uh, white people invented yeah, it, or, or right? The, or the king white... of country music. You know what I'm saying? And you've had you've had huge black country artists, right? Like but who, but the blowfish, but like, let like, a Caucasian uh, country singer say that he's gonna be labeled a racist. Absolutely, right? He'll get canceled. But he have to go on an apology to yeah. him. And I fuck with Uvo. I like watching his stuff because he be funny as hell. I've interviewed him before. He be funny as hell. Well, my name got thrown into it. Yeah, yeah. He's like, oh yeah, you know. What what you know? Vlad hasn't built any schools, <laughs> so I had to pull out my I had to pull out a flashback where seven years ago he's talking about building a school on Vlad TV. Someone pointed out that he's actually been taking donations since two thousand nine for the school. Gifts, yeah, gifts, donations, donations. <laughs> so for fourteen years he's been taking people's money yeah. to build this school. And it still hasn't opened yet. Yeah. <laughs> now we say next year it's going to open. Now when it opens, I, I'm not going to say anything. But until it opens, you know, and people are like, well, have you? So in response to him saying, have I started any schools myself? No, I have not. But I've also haven't been taking people's money. Right. You know what I'm saying? To start these schools. Right. Well, I haven't been taking people's money at all. Actually, I've actually been, been paying people. Like, you know what I'm saying? I've literally put millions of dollars in people's pockets in terms of interviews and stuff like that. Right. Uh, but, yeah, I I, th I think it's a little bit silly. I mean, you know, because, for example, he's like, oh, you know, like, you know, no uh, non-Palestinian because that would be the best of Palestine. But actually, like, you, you see this all the time. I remember there was this, uh, this Hawaiian sumo wrestler who went to Japan and became the biggest sumo wrestler in Japan mm -hmm. just because, you know, uh, Hawaiians are, like, huge. You know, and Samoans and stuff like that. Mm. So, 
I, I mean, listen, I think he knows how to piss people off right. you know, by saying shit like that. I think he, he knows how to cater. Get a reaction. Yeah, he knows how to cater to people that really feel some type of way. Yeah. Uh, but I think it's silly. Um, do I think Eminem is the king of hip hop? Uh, no, I don't it's think so. Like... In terms of living people? Yeah. Or just overall? I don't think it's... How L- living I... people, I would say, How would do changed. you decide fucking who's the best... Well, the, well, I mean, you can look at record sales, I guess. That's one way to decide. Man, listen, let's talk about record sales, because I see, listen, if you take all that music that came out in the early 2000s, and you put some against some of it these days, you'd be like, man, this shit is wet. Right, well, because it's, it's a different measuring stick. Yeah, but back then- People had to buy albums. Yeah, well, the other thing back then, what you heard was forced into your ear. Exactly. There's that. There was no streaming. It, it, yeah, radio play what you you have to listen to the radio. Yeah, you start to like it because so, you just keep hearing so it. After time. a while, you yeah, just hang, hang low, do it, wobble to it. It just stuck in your goddamn head because it came on the radio eight, nine motherfucking times. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of that shit, if it came out these days, the artists who just be feeling like they're just the biggest artists ever came out, that shit wouldn't even be hitting right now. And because you got a lot more competition and you got a lot more music. A lot more people who can make music now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it ain't just about who can force shit through the radio. Okay, so so r- right now, who would I say the king of hip hop? Well, if I okay, if I say the king of hip hop, by my definition, it would be if you take all the biggest hip hop artists and they all dropped on the same day, who would get the biggest impact? I would say Kendrick. I say as far as rap, rap, like just rapping, as far as the best rapper right now, yeah. it'd be out of Kendrick, J. Cole, and Eminem. Best rapper. Kendrick, J. Cole, or Eminem. And you can put Wayne in there too. But when it, when it, no, well, Wayne, Wayne's not making the impact that he used to make. Yeah. Wayne, well, well, but that's Wayne, not his fault, though. I'm not saying it's his fault. I'm just saying, like, so you, you wouldn't put Drake in that? Drake is a, see, I, I separate rapper and artist. So you say Drake is more of an artist than a rapper? Yeah. Because he sings yeah. as well? So where would you put Jay-Z in that? Drake is not in my list. Not in your list. Okay, that's uh, fair. Because Jay-Z I, is older. Yeah, I just don't really, I just ain't got a lot of Jay-Z songs that I can rap to you word for word. Fair enough. Well, you're, how old are you now? Uh, 20s, not down. Right, 27. 27. <laughs> right, I'm 50. I'm, I'm almost twice your age. Um, for me, I'd probably go listen to Jay Z first. Yeah. For me, for me, just because I feel like whenever Jay Z drops, he has something to say, and I feel like, you know, it's he doesn't sound dated. I feel like, you know, yeah. but that that's just me. That's just me. But I think overall, I think if Jay Z, no, sorry, if, if Kendrick, J Cole, Eminem. And Drake all dropped on the same day. I think Kendrick would make the biggest impact. You could also say, I mean, another another measuring stick is the amount of Grammys they have. I think Kendrick has more Grammys than anybody else. I think Kendrick is probably the more. Uh... Man, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Let's slide with that. No, you're not rocking with the, the Grammy. The Grammy. Uh, Hell argument? no, man! I've seen some shit nominated from Grammy. I ain't never heard in my damn life. That's true. Now I want to search it up. I got. I had a million times more plays than the person that, that got won a Grammy who was nominated. Yeah, because like, a lot of times Grammys go for like the artsy yeah, artists. You know but what I'm nobody saying? ever heard it. Yeah. Nobody. Yeah, no. Like, how do you even get in here? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I, I can't I, I can't even uh, accept that one now. I mean, listen, I interviewed one of the dudes from Millie Vanilli. You know who they are? Millie Vanilli? Millie Vanilli. I heard them. Before. Millie Vanilli was this group that came out of Europe and they won because you know, there's different Grammys out there. You know, you could win Grammy for Best Engineer, or Grammy for Best Soundtrack, or whatever else. But there's like the, there's the big Grammys, which is like Best New Artist, Song of the Year, Record of the Year, Album of the Year. Like you know, I mean, there, there are certain big ones. They won Best New Artist and I think Song of the Year. Then it was found out that they didn't sing any of their shit. It was all lip syncing. They had these like older rappers and singers that did all the vocals and they were just pretending to sing and rap. 
and they had to give back their Grammys. It was the first and only time in Grammy history that's ever happened. They had to give back their Grammys. Yeah. And then one of the dudes died from like a drug overdose, like later. Uh, and I interviewed the dude that was still alive. So, you know, the Grammys are questionable, but then again, you, you have monumental artists like the Beyonce's and stuff like that who have a ton of Grammys and I think they're deserved. You know, well, you know, speaking of that, Trina said recently that the best female rapper when she raps is Beyonce. I ain't never heard Beyonce rap. She raps sometimes, some of her songs. I know Trina find in a motherfucker, and I still want her if she'll still get it. Yeah. Hell yeah. Let's, let's put that out there then, Trina. She know. I told it to her face. Oh, to her face? Ooh, I told her. Fuck. Okay, I got to hear the story. What happened? Uh, we was in the club, and I was like, damn, that's Trina right there. You know what I'm saying? Trick Daddy introduced us. The baddest you know bitch. what I'm saying? And I say, Lord, I want it. You know you what I'm saying? You said it just like that. I want it. You said, I, I, you I want it. You know what I'm saying? If you ever, you know what I'm saying, you feel like you need, you know what I'm saying, come holler at me. <laughs> she, just, she just laughed at me. Every time I see her, I say, I'm waiting on you. I've been to be Trina before. We, we know each other. Mm. Pretty girl. Yeah. Pretty. Yeah. Pretty. No, no kids. Yeah. Yeah, you trying to give her a first kid? I yeah. don't I donate. Yeah? I drop it off. You you'll drop it off. Oh, most definitely. Okay, you shoot up the club. On the huh? front porch. Front porch. The mailman. Well, speaking of women that you like, Glorilla. Uh-huh. It's been in your sights. Yeah. And I guess it started when people were asking her why her pants were unzipped a lot. And she said that her twat is too fat. <laughs> and you responded. You said, I'm a part-time gynecologist. Yeah. You were suffering from PCD, fat coochie disorder. No need to worry. It is easily curable by my home remedies. Yeah. Let me know when you need an appointment booked. Yeah. So so that that's your style right there, Glorilla? Uh, yeah. See, this is like with me. I feel like the reason why these ladies be getting all these surgeries and all this stuff is because us men don't compliment them enough. But well, she got her, her, her breasts done. Yeah, she recently. just got them done. Well, yeah. no, they ain't my crush no more. Oh, after she got them done, you don't nah, like her nah, anymore? No, nah, it ain't about to say. I just, I got tired of chasing her. You know what I'm saying? Well, I'm how a, much did you really chase her? Apart from a few Instagram posts and a couple man, little, little been red a while, carpet interviews. It's been about a year, you know what I'm saying? I get tired, you know? For a year, you've been going after Glorilla? About a year now. Okay. You know? Looking at Carla right now. Well, I, I remember, uh, what was it? I think you were on her live. You said, lick your lips again. I like that shit. I'll be crazy about you. I'll never hold you back. I'll protect you. <laughs> I said, I'll look. What's your fence Fuck your main page. I want to know the real you. Yeah. Throw me. Yeah, it's not like me. It is you. <laughs> I follow the actual screenshots. Well, that for, is you. Well, for be all, man. I, I, you, listen, don't, don't submit it and get this chance to be or somebody in life sometimes. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to use it to the fullest. You know what I'm saying? Fuck with me. I'm going to show you the way. You know? Right. Well, she responded to you. Yeah. And she said, I'm not interested. She said, Frederick. She called you by your full name. Yeah. She said, I'm not interested in your polygamy. Yeah. She said it all funny, though. She kind of, like, <laughs> messed up the word. Yeah. She said she got a man. Yeah. But there's, there's actually a classic hip-hop song called... Uh, the chorus goes, I got a man. And the dude responds, a positive case. I was like, what's your man got to do with me? Yeah. Thanks. That's how you feel? That shit just turned me on. Oh, so you like when girls I like got being, men? I like being denied. You like being denied or you like being the side dude? Uh, it depends on the, the situation and the circumstances. You know what I'm saying? Have you it's, ever been a side dude? Yeah, I've been a side dude before. Yeah? I'm pretty sure. I feel like all of us have been a side dude before. It just I know it. Have I been a side dude? My listen, I had a chick gay head so good one time, I waited for the nigga to drop her back home. I was waiting in the driveway, and I did not care when she got out of that car. So her man dropped her off, and you were in the driveway was, waiting the driveway. for her. For her. Did the man know that you were waiting for her? I don't know. I didn't care. <laughs> didn't care. So you're ready to potentially have a confrontation. It wouldn't be no confrontation. What do you mean? As long as he ain't stopping me. Well... If this was my girl and I seen a dude waiting, yeah, I don't think back then I don't think you wanted he wanted to confront confront Are you. Me. A little crazier back then. Yeah, I was different. You were different. Yeah, right. Because I remember you were on. A, I watched the the Gillian Wallow, uh, 
interview and you talked about how back then you were just really angry yeah. all the time but that's not the fredo that i know because yeah. whenever we meet up whenever we see each other yeah you always have a smile on your face like you're smiling right now yeah i, I mean i got to the point i've never even seen you angry yeah i try not to be good you shouldn't be yeah. what's to be angry about man look at look at your life right now yeah but uh I think when when I went to jail, a lot of stuff was happening, and I couldn't like when you're in jail, you can't do nothing about it. So it was like, am I gonna let sit down, let it stress me out? You know what I'm saying? And nowadays, you know, I just I just try to, you know, I feel like I've been sad enough. I try to be happy as I can. You know what I'm saying? Whatever happiness is. When's the last time you've been really, really angry? Really, really angry. Last time I've been really, really angry. God damn. Really, really angry. It got levels of angry. I got like pissed off, got mad, got hot, got angry, then got angry, angry. You got violent. Yeah. That's kind of the height, I think, of anger. I don't think I want to talk about last time of angry. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. We'll leave it at that. Yeah. Well, uh. It's been a long, long time. Okay. That's good. You shouldn't be angry. Because no. that's when you make the worst decisions. Facts. You know what I mean? I'm sure when you were locked up, there was a whole bunch of people around you. They got really, really angry. Yeah. And that affected them for years to come. You know? Um, you shot your shot at uh, Ruby Rose, too. Did I? You did. What happened was... You don't remember any of this? Okay. Nah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna some, listen, sometimes I just be complimenting. I don't right. be well, shooting Right. Well, okay. So, so what happened was she had posted a picture and she had pink hair. Oh, about... And it. she said the hair matched my pussy. Yeah. And you say, can you show it on OnlyFans? I'm trying to cash out. Yeah, because, man, niggas that is subscribing to your shit, nigga ain't seen that bit. I'm trying to see that. Yeah, I've never subscribed to her OnlyFans. I don't I don't know. Yeah. I'm, I, I'm, I have, I have, I, 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 I be wanting to see. Straight up. That she dyed her. Yeah, I want to see. Her pubic hair pink. Because, like, she got some nice, like, smooth skin, so I bet her shit probably, like, pretty. I've interviewed her before. She's pretty. Mm-hmm. She got some nice sex appeal. Pretty girl. Um, I mean, I wasn't really blown away. I seen her one person. time in person. I, I wasn't really. I mean, I know people are gonna go, oh, oh, Vlad is just no. Like, but I, I interviewed her like early in her career. Yeah. You know, what I'm saying that now. Granted, she wasn't like she was just dressed. Yeah. She, had, you know, I, I, I think like with her, people started getting more into her when she started getting more like naked, pretty much. You know, I, ain't, I, ain't, I ain't seen a naked. Well, I don't mean naked, naked, but you I'm know, but wearing like I'm, thongs and yeah, stuff I, like yeah, that. Fuck all that. I want to see you naked. Naked, naked. Yeah, I don't want to see well, all that Yeah, shit. I don't think she's naked on OnlyFans. No, she's not. I don't subscribe like oh, eight times. Oh, you subscribe? Time. Yeah, like eight times and unsubscribe. Like once subscribe, I subscribe. Yeah, subscribe. Yeah, once I, yeah, once I subscribe and I see I ain't going to be in here long, I unsubscribe. You feel okay, me? so what is she showing her OnlyFans as a previous subscriber? Well, when I did subscribe, she got like little teasing ass fucking pictures and video just a bunch of fucking teasing brushing her teeth teasing oh teasing okay bunch of fucking teasing that's it mm. remember there was that dude who said he spent 60,000 on her only fans but yeah I want to see that cat and it being and it being fake he didn't actually do any of that for real yeah what was like some uh, marketing pretty much they kind of got with him and kind of like told him to do all that shit yeah. but, but no I wasn't shooting my shot I'm just shit if you talking about only fans I want to see that cat mm. you know what I'm saying I'm throwing the tip in that motherfucker for you yeah yeah. Uh, how much would you pay to see Ruby Rose's cat? In person or online? On OnlyFans. If I get my a personal, yes, high a quality, personal, high quality, direct message. Full. Yes. POV. Right picture. there. Like the whole, the crazy, you know. And it don't get deleted. And it's just for me? Well, you can screen capture it. So it doesn't matter if you if it gets deleted. No, nah, it's, it's a difference. If it's just for me, I might get like a little visual and a little play. So how much? Gym, is it just how, how, for the play? What do you mean the play? The play is if she, you know, slapped that bitch or something, you know? Okay, yeah, you get all that. I give up out 500 a stack. I don't think it's going to do it. You don't think? I don't think so. With her? I think she's got a little too much money right now to, for $500. Shit. You got to go like Magic City or you something. You never know. She might get bored one day and be like, shit, let me go get you know, a little water bill or something. <laughs> you never know you know what I'm saying hey I pay for it alright well Ruby Rose if you're short $500 <laughs> if you need that if you're in a bind and you yeah, need $500 know. 
Fredo Bang. I will tip it. Got, got the money in hand right now. It's official. There's a, there's a, there's a verbal tip, contract I right now. I will tip it if you clip it. Tip it if you clip it. Yeah. All right. But nah, I uh I don't be shooting at my shot or not. I just like to, you know, tell yeah. some ladies, you know, they look good and stuff like that, you know? And I just speak my mind sometimes, especially on Twitter. I just say what the fuck I want. Right. But, you know, that ain't me shooting my shot. You know, Glorilla, yeah, but I had to move on, bro, you know? Mm. I was chasing too hard. I'm on call it right now. Okay. Uh, That's you, had, you had a music video for uh, FWM. Yeah. Fuck with me. And you had girls with bags over their heads, mm -hmm. one of which is Sexy Red, and the other other one is uh, Sukiana. Was it like Billie Eilish, too? Yeah, I love Billie Eilish. That's you love Billie Eilish? I love her. She's, I want, in, she's I, in the girls, too, which, you know, for yeah, you is, is right along the... Yeah, I was thinking about getting her name tatted on this hand. Wait, wait, I mean, wait, her wait, face. wait, 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 wait. You're going to get Billie Eilish's name... Like, face. Face yeah. tatted on your hand? Is it the, the, the jack off hand? Yeah, it is. But not that one, though. I'll do it if I. I, I don't know why you're doing it. I, I'm, I'm, just, do it cause she got a real, I'm trying to think. Like, I'm just going to do it because she got a real pretty face. Yeah, she's pretty. She's, she's cold. Pretty. She, she's really cold blooded. What do you mean? She cold blooded. She just be wearing bad clothes. I see through it. I seen it. She she, she thick. Yeah. Yeah, she got big, big titties. Ooh, them bitches out there. Yeah. Yeah. You know white girls like that? Huh? You know white girls like that? I never really. I think I might have had two white girls my whole life. Your whole life, two white girls. Yeah, they not. I don't think they really into me. I think they really into me. Plus, I'm more. I'm more of a. You know. I probably had about two white girls myself too. Well, see, well, for me, I've had a lot of Latin girls that. You know, I mean, some of them are white technically, yeah. but they're Latin. But white, yeah, white girls aren't really into me. Well, mostly black women are into me. Most of my relationships have been with black women. Uh, but Billy Ellis, that that's you're gonna make an exception for that. Ooh, Billy Ellis, is that is that the top of your list right now? Billy Ellis, huh? And Coyle Ray, and Coyle Ray, but Zeno's gonna be mad right now. I would give a damn what Zeno got going on. Yeah, who cares? <laughs> He's mad at me anyway, so whatever. Uh, but 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 you're into the the skinny. I'm in. I'm in to in Well, I, I guess if you're into Glorilla, she, then I guess Coyle Ray's right along. Yeah, Coyle got a like. She got a face. Yeah, she's got a pretty face. She got a face. Mm. She got a face. So, Billy Ellish and Coil Ray, your ultimate threesome. Oh, movies. Lord. That's, that's... <laughs> you might just pass out, huh? Ooh, what? Your ultimate threesome is Coil Ray and Billy Ellish. You got a devious mind, Vlad, because I didn't even think about that. Well, I'm I'm putting it out there. I mean, if you're gonna, you know, I'm connecting the I dots. I thought I had to choose. You tell me I had. To, you, I could, you could do oh, both. That's crazy. I mean, this is all. This is that's all. Some wild just shit. mean you talking shit, anyways. It's not like you know we're we're, we're exactly talking. It wouldn't about be reality. ultimate unless I I gotta get one smooth chocolate in there. Then it'd be ultimate. Okay, so so who would be the who would be the foursome then? I don't want to say the fourth one because I might get in trouble for that one. Why would you get in trouble? Somebody's daughter. Well, they're all somebody's daughter. Nah. Then... Oh, somebody that we all know? Yeah, somebody I respect, I won't say. Well, Hold on, now I got to... See, now now I'm trying to think who it I is. Damn, damn, I'm sure you about to say that. Who I could throw up in there? Hold on, who who has a... Who has a brown-skinned daughter who's, who's bad? Hmm. 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 Mm. I, I, I can't. I Fuck can't. it. Give me Chloe Bailey. Chloe Bailey. Yeah. We, we, okay. We, we. I mean, she's not brown skin. She's got light skin, but she, she's yeah, bad. I don't care, man. That's, that's Boosie's new uh, new crush, by the way. Chloe <sighs> Bailey. You don't have to step aside. She's got to step aside. Step aside. Well, I just saw her. Uh, I just watched the, the, the Kennedy Honors. Uh, What's that? But, uh, Dion Warwick was being honored. Um, the Kennedy Honors is like this yearly thing they do in New York, which they honor like this like major like singer usually every year and they just honored her they would have all these other singers come in and like mm. do her songs yeah, and chloe I, bailey came in yeah, i don't know her look, looking looking very attractive yeah oh she cold-blooded didn't you see you seen her inside that tv show oh yeah the man. uh when she was uh i was so mad when she was doing the sex scene yeah i was mad ass yeah i was up. mad you were mad i was jealous 
with that damson uh idris from yeah. uh, snowfall oh you know why i was jealous i just got jealous here well you know who she's uh, she was out seen with recently tiger tiger you got beef with tiger right now don't you i just don't see what she you know what just don't see what she sees in him well she used to be a gunner for a little bit before he got locked up i guess she just made some bad choices bad choices she needs some Fredo Bay in her life, huh? Yeah, she need a she need She's messing up life. right now. You know, but you know, I ain't like I feel like, like us Louisiana niggas, we get looked over. You know what I'm saying? What do you mean? I don't know. I think some of these women think we just country and just aggressive or something. You know what I'm saying? We really, you know, we got that southern hospitality. I could cook. You know what I'm saying? I clean. I'm very neat. Mm. Um, I take care of my kids. I love kids. Mm-hmm. I open doors. Um, I, you know what I'm saying? I don't pass gas around nobody. Mm. Can't no woman say she ever heard me, see me pass gas. You never man. pass gas around a woman? No. In life? No. So you just hold it in the whole time? No. Yeah. Okay. Has yes. a woman ever passed gas around you? I hope not. You hope not? Nah. So you've never heard a woman pass gas around you? Nah, not no woman I was dating, ever. But you're not, I remember, I think it was on Million, Do- Million Dollars with the Game, like, you don't really do relationships like that. Um, I try not to because I'm a very emotionally tired person. So mm. I, I kind of love very hard, and I care too much. Mm. So I try not to. Well, maybe you haven't met the right the right girl yet. Mm. But you also, you know, I think at this point in your life, in your 20s, you know, career is doing well, you're touring around. It's probably not the right time. Yeah, I'm, I'm more focused on trying to uh, just solidify the rest of my life. Exactly. You know, As up, you should. You know what I'm oh, I, I was a mess in my 20s. So. Yeah, so, so yeah. some people can't really get with their program. Well, uh, speaking of Gunner, I remember we talked about this last time, you know, about how you would never do what Gunner did, which is admit that your label is a criminal organization. Yeah. Since that time, he basically reached a level of his career that he never reached before getting locked up. Mm -hmm. Fuck You Mean is the biggest solo song he ever dropped. I think it's still on the charts months and months later. So do you feel, as we go into 2024, that snitching has any effect on a rapper's career? Or is it just promo? It actually helps them to a certain degree. Um, I feel like people don't give a fuck these days. Um, and I'm not look, again. I'm not agreeing to what if if he is a one or not because I really don't give a fuck. Well, yeah. I mean, I mean, what yeah, he did. I mean, I'm, I think just, I'm just stating just for the record. You yeah, know what I'm saying? I mean, what he did, I think, was gray area. Some people say he did. Some people yeah. say he did. It, it yeah, is just, what it I, is. Yeah, I just don't. He, he has to hold whatever right. people's yeah, perception I is. I really don't care. But yeah, uh, as far as that. Nah, it, people don't really care no more. It's just more about the music and stuff. And, you know, he made that song. The beat was rock. That, that's a nice ass beat. It's a good song. Yeah. And I feel like some, well, in these days, everybody likes to see, especially like, they like uh, controversy. And what's more controversy if you told or not? You know what I'm saying? And and so they be wanting to see what you got to say. And shit, you just take that interest and, uh, Feed them a little bit here, there, there, bow. There you go, got a piss on. Yeah, I mean, listen. Uh, I mean, I mean t- don't, don't get me wrong. He was already one of the biggest artists out anyway. He was. So. Absolutely. But I think he got bigger now. Yeah. I, I don't think that's even debatable. Because he had, now he has a storyline and, and something that people are trying to see what he's going to say about this. So, you know right. what I'm saying? Right. Well, because uh, I don't feel like you really knew who Gunner was because he didn't really do a lot of interviews. He's not on social media. Yeah. I, I feel like more people know who, in terms of personality-wise, who DJ Vlad is than Gunna. And I'm not nearly the level of a celebrity that he is. Right. But people just know who I am a little bit better because I've done a lot of interviews. And plus, I always put in my two cents when I interview other people as well. But him, he's sort of just like... A, he just... You didn't really know. It seemed like he didn't have much of a personality. But now you're right. Now he has a story that everyone knows about. That's the permanent part of his story. Right. And that is that he cooperated 
in the YSL case in whatever way he did it, whether it affected, whether it's going to affect Young Thug or not remains to be seen, but he did the whole yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am situation. And that's now a permanent part of his story. So I don't know. I, I don't know. It's, it's, I mean, I, I think it doesn't really surprise me because if you think about it, 99% of rap fans don't have any connection to snitching or mm. criminal activities or whatever else. Now you could say maybe his core fans from Atlanta probably do to a certain degree, but like, you know, I, I, I don't, you know, like, for example, like me personally, I've never been put in a position to snitch on somebody or whatever else. Yeah, a lot you know? of people have. Because I just don't, you know what I mean? Like, I don't really care if I have snitches around me because I'm not doing anything that they can snitch on. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. I pay my taxes. I don't break the law. Mm -hmm. I pay people. I don't rob people. I don't sell drugs. Like, like you know what I'm saying? So it's just, for me, I don't care. You know, um, Takashi did what he did and then he went to the Spanish market and blew up. It seems like the Spanish people don't give a shit for what he's done. You know, he's one of the biggest Spanish artists now. So I, I, I don't know. I don't know. But we are in New Orleans right now and BG just got hit with some allegations. Yeah. You heard about this? Yeah, I heard about it. You know the story? Yeah, basically they got pulled over something and the dude said it was his gun and then they went to jail. Um, and then when it's time to take the time, he was saying they were his or some shit. Yeah, I mean, the story that I heard, I mean, according to 1090 Jake, who's a regular on my show, was that I guess this dude is supposed to be the fall guy for the gun charge. But then they're saying that BG took the stand against them. Uh. And I guess the guy didn't know that was going to happen. So there's a debate as to whether he cooperated and everything else like that. I don't know. I mean, WAC 100 kind of put it out there. 1090 Jake kind of filled in some of the blanks. I know Boosie's upset over this whole situation because BG's his man. Mm -hmm. And Boosie takes a very hard line stance, you know, to the point where, you know, his whole project with TI got scrapped yeah. over my interview with him, which yeah. he doesn't blame me for. We actually talked about that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It ended up being not exactly true because I think TI was just talking as a, a what if situation. But I don't know. You know, BG responded to it and said, oh, you know, I talked to, you know, the Internet's undefeated and I talked to my homies and they understand or whatever else. I mean, what's your take on it? Uh, uh, well, for one, Louisiana, we very, very different. Mm. So, you got the, for one, everybody almost can out here. You know what I'm saying? Everybody know everybody. And BG is a person that everybody grew up trying to be. You know what I'm saying? So, if... He got on the stand and told on somebody. We all would know. You feel me? Like it might, it might, like it might fucking, the whole sky might turn black. <laughs> you feel me? Like it might start raining cats and dogs and type shit. I, I mean, yeah. I mean, uh, WAC One Hundred said that Birdman was furious yeah. over this whole situation because he he rocks the beachy. Right. I, I know Birdman. We, we talk. Yeah. So yeah. I say um, I fuck with BG. Yeah, I mean, listening to some of the new records that he has with Gucci, like, you forget how dope he was. Yeah. It's like, oh, shit. Like, BG was like, I mean, you you, you were you were too young when, I mean, do you remember when Cash Money dropped? Mm-hmm. You, you, you were like a little kid back then. Yeah. But, like, the first superstar of Cash Money was Juvenile. Right. But I felt like BG was close, close behind. Right. And, and I mean, a lot of people like BG more than Juvenile. You know, what I mean, it depends on who you talk to. Yeah, BG, BG, wrong, man. Yeah, he really, really, he really is. I want to, I want to give my producer uh, some some of these beats. Mm. I feel like he uh, needs some of those, that Louisiana sauce to you. So, so would you do a song with BG right yeah, now? Yeah, yeah. I'm trying. I'm, so, I'm, so you don't care about I, that shit. No, nah, no. Nah. I'm talking to him a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, well, listen. When he when he got locked up, the internet was not what it is right now. Yeah, it's a, it was a whole different beast. Right. Because he's he's been gone for a while. 
Yeah, I don't. They, they didn't even have Instagram when he went to jail. No, I don't think so. Yeah, you're right. But it was like really early in the days of Instagram. No, Instagram came out 2012. Yeah, right. It, ain't, it was not. I think he yeah. went to jail like oh seven oh eight, something like that. Yep. Uh well, uh, Kodak Black, who you fuck with, well, you uh you redid one of his songs, right? Yeah, a while ago. A while ago, and I think you actually like kind of stood up for him when he was going back and forth with Ti or. I did. Something like that. I'm I just be speaking my mind sometimes. Right. Uh, he got arrested for falling asleep in his car while he was high, and they're saying that when the police showed up, he had like a mouthful of cocaine. Uh, he denied ever using cocaine. But he just said that I don't do cocaine, but I do I do meth. Kind of a weird, a weird justification. And now he's back in jail again. People compare him to the to this generation's DMX. Nah. Not in terms of musical style, but just like a really big artist who has a huge following that's constantly going in and out of jail. Oh, okay. Constantly has serious drug issues. You know what I'm saying? And is like gets a lot of chances and comes out. I mean, he got pardoned by Trump. Yeah, that's that's crazy. Only to go back to jail for what he got pardoned for. I don't think Joe Biden's going to pardon Kodak Black. I think I think he had his one shot at a pardon. Do you, do you know Kodak Black at all? Yeah, I met a couple times. We've been talking a couple of times. Okay. What's your take on all this? I love his music. Oh, uh, I don't really know what we got going on with that, but I love his music. You know what I'm saying? Have you ever had uh, drug issues at all? Me? Yeah. Uh, I didn't start doing anything until I was like 17 or something like that, 16, 17. And what was that? Uh, my first thing I ever did was lean. Okay. And then I did person and stuff. So I was always the type of person, if I was to do something, I go cold turkey for like two, three weeks, like making myself not need it. I've never been to the point where I need something. You know what I'm saying? I I think just some people have addictive personalities, and some people. Yeah. Well, I say it's it's it's, it's about mentality. I I ain't never felt like I need anything, but okay. maybe water and some coochie. You're right. You know what I'm saying? Addicted <laughs> to coochie. Now the coochie of motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, you start going through with yeah, veins like and shit popping out your head. Right. Like. <laughs> so. uh, I never tried perks. Yeah. But what does that do to you? Um, well, if you're an upper type of person already, like so people who I know I know they normally be on uppers, they don't like perks because it give you more of a like a a mellow type of vibe. But I'm a I'm more of a person who's a mellow, so it's kind of just mm. numb yeah. and numb you up a little bit. Yeah, I remember I interviewed, uh, well, the one time I interviewed Jay the Youngin. In um, the middle of the too. interview, yeah, he said, oh, hold on, man, I'm fucked up off the perks, and he went through up. In my <laughs> Look, and this is another thing I want to say. When people be saying this perk 30 bullshit, there's no such thing as a fucking perk 30. A 30 is a fucking Roxy. What's that? Roxy? Yeah, what's that? You know, you never. You know. I, I don't do pills. <sighs> at uh, all. At all. I mean, I've done ecstasy. I'm trying to remember the legal name. Is R O X? Uh, Oxy? No, rocks. Roxy. Roxy. Yeah, I don't know what that is. Yeah, that's what a, everybody keeps saying. Fucking perk thirties. It's, it's the same thing as per, per uh, like a perk, but it's just like three times stronger. Huh. Yeah. Um. I hope Kodak gets it together. I think he's got a, a crazy fan base. And I think people really, really fuck with what he has going on. But uh well, listen, sometimes, I, I, I got I got crackheads in my family. Uh, sometimes you know people just be having a monkey on their back or yeah. just bad luck sometimes, yeah. bro. I have people in my family with no teeth. Mm. I got close friends with no teeth that are my age. You know what I'm saying? One of my one of my homies I grew up with. Like we met up, uh, we hadn't seen each other for like like I don't know, like ten years or something. And he pulled his teeth out at lunch. Like yo, yeah, uh, cocaine, shit, probably some other shit mixed in. Mm. You know, fifty. You should still have your teeth at fifty. Trust me. Um, yeah, Kodak. 
I, I don't know, man. I don't know. It's, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. Um, but you guys haven't actually done music together. No, nah, I want to. You try to get him on, on, on your album. But, yeah. He, Maybe I, one I don't day. Know, man. I don't know. Um, Derek Chauvin. Who did it? That's the one who killed uh, George Floyd. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Stay out of 22 times. Yeah. By Mexico. Ain't he in the feds? I think so. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, uh, I, I should be happy. Well, I heard the feds is, is not as bad as state. Huh? I've always heard the feds is not as bad as state no, prisons. You're you dying the feds. The feds. So the difference between the feds and the state, uh, the feds, uh, <sighs> the time is longer than, than most state. Not a, uh, with the state, you'll go. It, it depends on where you fall at, but the the, the feds got is more. They go off more. They more regulated. As far as okay, you violate, you get fucked up. You feel me? Now the state, you might file. You might fall on a line or a dormitory that really ain't got no regulation like that. So. You might just be cool, oh, or you might, slide. yeah, or you yeah. might fall in this dome. We got a bunch of knives and phones and bullshit going on. You know what I'm saying? It's it's a, huh? It's a, well, it's, I, I've I've been in neither. I, I've been in county, like, yeah, uh, section yeah. bookings. But like I, I've always heard from everyone I've interviewed is that like in the feds you got more like people with money. People yeah. do more financial crimes. Yeah, more cartel. White, got more, co yeah. white collar shit. Gangs, gangs heavy enough. You know? But, but I heard the state is where it's just more grimy. Like, you know, it's more like, you yeah. know. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like, like the feds is more regulated. You know what I'm saying? So they're not, like, the state is more of a crash out type of shit going on. But the, but the feds is more regulated, like yeah. hits and shit going on. When shit. you were locked up, it was what, state? Yeah, state. So you've never been in the feds? I went to federal to hold it. I'd have been with federal. Okay. But I ain't state. Okay. Okay. Uh, Yeah, man. Uh, 22 times by a Mexican dude who stabbed him on Black Friday mm. as like a as and a, that could and that could be either a hit he could he could that could it probably only had nothing to do with George Floyd it could have been uh somebody well, you say he did it for the black community oh, that's why he did it on Black Friday oh yes yeah, so, well, Mexicans uh, been putting it in for black people man because yeah, you know the dude that killed Nipsey got beat up by a Mexican too yeah so he probably doing a lot of time and just felt like fucking him up. Yeah, he's got charged with a bunch of new shit, but he was actually an informant, from what I understand. Also, I mean, he was he he, he was a snitch. That he cooperated. Yeah, so he now nah, nah, another reason he might have did that to get the fuck away from where he was at. Maybe, yeah, <laughs> yeah that's what he was doing. Yeah, well, was he was a, part of the Mexican mafia, but since he cooperated, he probably was. It was a checkout move. Checkout, yeah. Twenty. I'm surprised that you could actually live after getting stabbed up twenty two times. Depending on what he stabbed him with. Cause sometimes it don't be knives. Sometimes it be motherfucking. Uh, Metal from a bed or something. Okay. Got all type of shit they cutting you with. Have you seen a stabbing <laughs> yeah. in prison? Yeah, definitely a couple. How many times did you see someone get stabbed? If you were just to guess. Some, th something you actually saw. Like 15, something like that. You saw someone get stabbed. One, two, three, four, five, six, yeah, seven, it, eight, but nine, they, ten, they 11, were both, 12, 13, They were 14, both stabbing 15. each other. It was, a, it was a knife fight. So they'd be stabbing each other? Yeah. Until one of them run, like until one of them run up, run out and give and give up, or one of them die. You know. Watching this, right? You're seeing this happen. Did you think like, how the hell did I get? Yeah, I was like, I need. It's like a whole that. different. Yeah, planet. I'm, I'm gonna tell you, like, I'm a rapper, so I know once I go to a certain place, it got people gonna know me. It got and, and motherfuckers like trying rappers sometimes. So you know what I'm saying. And I'm always be a low key nigga, so I try to be low key. Right. So, uh, but I fight. You know what I'm saying. I'm gonna get down and do what I gotta do. I ain't. You ain't about to run me off. Have you ever gotten stabbed? Nah. But see, this is what I'm trying to tell you. So like I say, I fight all day. I was on that. Now, how many fist fights have you gotten into in jail? Oh, I think it was 21, exactly. 21 fist fights. Yeah. So you would be regularly fighting. Yeah, and then I had, what, broke, what, what, I had just broke my knuckle before I went to jail, so I... So your hand was messed up. What would be over? Hmm? What's an example? What's, the, what's an example of your worst fight? My worst fight? What, you, what, what do you mean worse? I mean the, 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 the most damage that... The most damage in fight I had, uh, I got crowded. Meaning? Uh, so I had somebody... Um, 
So basically, somebody sent a hit from from uh, from the streets to me, right? Wait, 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 what does that mean? They sent a hit. So someone from outside trying to get me fucked up, trying to get you fucked. So they what? They paid someone, yeah, to to fuck you up, right? But that's how they did it. And so I got a lot of motion in jail. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people fuck with me. Mm-hmm. So then, to, in order to do it, they had to play a move to where nobody could like jump in or, or, or stop it going on. So they put they put some little shit in the wind, and so they had a nigga from across the hall claim that, uh, I got his people fucked up and shit like this, and he want to do something with me. But I'm like, I'm like, shit, I don't even know that nigga. You feel me? But it wasn't clicking in my head what was going on. So I'm like, I don't know. But shit, we could do something. You feel me? So bam. That's how they tried to pull it. When we go to trial, the, the nigga would try to get me to come in the cut and fight. I'm like, I ain't fighting you in no cut. Just come on the line. We could just bang it out all night. You feel me? Pause. <laughs> so, man, when I get back on the line, the dude ain't come on the line. So, it had me hot because, you know, I didn't got my mind ready to go ahead and get down. You feel me? So, while I'm sitting there thinking, somebody come sneak me. You feel oh, me? Punch you from behind? Yeah. So, when he sneak me, I had my jumper wrapped around my legs. I fall. <laughs> When that happened, he come kick me. That's how I got this gash on my head. And then somebody else started hitting me too. So, bam. Nigga tried to choke me out. I played like I was asleep. <laughs> Came up. <laughs> and it went from there. But the whole time, they just sent that, they put, they set that whole play up. You feel me? Just so they could get the money and shit. They ended up getting jacked. Nigga got stabbed a thousand times when he came up. Okay, hold on. Hold on. So the dude that attacked you yeah. got paid. Like someone from the outside. He was supposed to get paid. They jacked him. Do you know how much? I think it was like a stack or some shit. Thousand dollars. Yeah. That's all it takes for someone to get attacked. Man, what? Hundred dollars will get you fucked up. Really? Yeah, that's stuff for like a week or two. Yeah, I remember I interviewed uh, Sammy the Bull. A thousand? You know what? Somebody do you in jail for a thousand? Nigga might rape you. For a thousand. For a thousand. They'll, they'll turn. They'll turn themselves out for you. <laughs> shit. Because yeah, I, I just interviewed Sammy the Bull, right? Yeah. And he was talking about how when John Gotti. He got beat up by this black dude in jail. They they got into it and they called him the N word or something like that, and the dude fucked him up real bad. So he got the Aryan. He paid the Aryan Brotherhood twenty five thousand to kill him. Yeah. They ended up not killing him, but I was like, twenty five thousand is that the going rate to kill someone? And Sammy was like, shit, twenty five thousand in prison. Someone's already doing life. That's a great amount of money. That's gonna be the rest. That's gonna yeah, be you the just give the time. dude's girlfriend gonna... on the outside, and she distributes it. Whatever, you, motherfuckers in there doing double, triple life. They got three, four bodies on them. What's another one? Who cares? At one point, John Gotti gets beat up by a black inmate. Do you know what that was over? Yeah, sure. He was racist in prison. He ran his mouth. They were gambling. Now they're in cells. And they, and they call out numbers they want to bet X amount of stamps, which is money in prison, on a game. So there was a guy, a black guy, who was, it's his turn to yell out his name. John Gotti interrupted, and the guy says, hey, it's my turn. And he says, I'm John Gotti. And the black guy said something to him. He said something back to him, racist. The next day, they came out. And the uh, black guy, uh, they fought, and the black guy destroyed him. Right, because Gotti was older by this point, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. It so, wasn't an old man, but it was old. Yeah. So because of that situation, he started to pay the Aryan Brotherhood for protection? Yes. Okay. And at one point, he actually- Not only protection, he was paying them to kill this black guy. Right, I was going to say that. So they, he paid him 25000 to kill this guy. Yes, he told him, I'll give you 25000 to kill a black guy, and then I'll give you so much a month for protection. Right. How much was he paying for protection? Do you know? No. No idea. No. And how do I know that? That there's two Aryan brothers that he was dealing with flipped. Mm. And when they cooperated, they gave him up. <laughs> okay. Of Everything they said. Right, but he's already doing life in prison, so it kind yeah, of Yeah, but not matter. only is he doing life in prison, he's dying of cancer. Yeah. So they put him down as an unindicted co-conspiracy. They're not, they're not interested in indicting him no more. In prison, is 25000 is that the going rate for a hit? 
I don't know if it's a going rate. It's a good rate, I think. Yeah. You'll get guys to hit you. I mean, you know, you get uh, guys who are fucking dead broke. They can't have, they can't even eat commissary, whether they're black, Mexican. I don't give a fuck what they are. When they can't eat, that's a good number. And some of them guys are doing life without parole. They really got nothing to lose. So they'll hit you for that kind of money. Yeah, they fuck. They, I wait. They fuck you up for a hundred dollar cash out. They can make them some stuff. Hundred dollar cash out. Yeah, they ain't. Uh, how, how, how much to kill someone in prison? What's the going rate? If you nah, were just put it. I don't know, but I know you yeah, Dan. They'll be dead for about about two, three thousand. Two, three thousand. That's all it takes. Yeah, Dan. It is. Now I don't know. I don't know. That's that's some old other shit, uh, nigga. Because that's some old other shit, nigga. But but, but, that, but don't they separate? I mean, the dudes that are doing life and, and stuff like that, they don't really put them around the guys that are only doing a couple of years, right? Yeah, so I, I slept next to somebody who had 40. 40 years. But you were yeah. facing 40. Yeah, I'm saying I I was I had got my time. I only had seven. Okay. You know, he had 40. I don't been around people are... with life, too. <clears throat> so you were around lifers? Yeah, I don't been around lifers, for sure. What what's the What's the mentality of a lifer in prison? Is it? Is it? Are most of these dudes like I don't give a fuck? I will kill you. Some of them, or some of them are just like, listen, I'm just, I know I'm here, and I'm yeah, just trying some to keep of them, it peaceful. Uh, some of them have been in denial, but at the end of the day, they knew they wasn't coming home. Hmm. Like you know what I'm saying? The ones who like, you know, they is over with for me. You know what I'm saying? So they in their head, they try to keep that that thought of going home, but they know it ain't really. But other than that, I. I've seen people who first got it or got 35, got 40, and they just break down just crying and shit. This is different emotions. Some people flash out. The ones that flash out, they send them straight to lockdown. They don't get, they don't get back online. Mm. I would definitely cry if I got 40. 100%. Yeah. I guarantee that. I guarantee it. So so this dude jumped you. He got paid well, a couple thousand. He was supposed to. I think he got jacked. Well, I ain't sure though. Okay, but... He didn't get the, but but he did attack you, so is that sometimes? Did, did he earn his money? He earned it, but he didn't get paid. Nah. Okay, but then he got stabbed a bunch of times. He, got, he got he got he got paid. Not then. to say he had anything to do with it. Yeah, he got he got he got paid then. Okay. <laughs> he got paid then. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh Quando Rondo got arrested recently. Two of you had some back and forths. For real? Yeah. Well. Yeah. There was something I remember a while back and I couldn't find the original post where he said something like, nice shirt, and he said, oh, you want one? Oh, okay. You know what I'm talking about? I think so. I think oh, when oh. I first came home, Jay, I didn't know who he was. Right. Are the two of you ever crossed paths since then? No. Okay. So, so there's no... No. Nothing between, between No, two. I don't even know dude like that. Okay. Fair enough. We'll leave it alone then. Well, since last time, Cassie sued Diddy for $30 million. Yeah. And she got paid faster than anyone I have ever seen. Yeah. But in that lawsuit came out some very interesting details about their relationship. And one of which is that she accused Diddy of being a cuckold. You know what that is? Yeah. I watch a lot of porn, so. Yeah. Cuckold porn ain't really my thing. Yeah. I'll watch it here and there if I just really want to see the girl. And I try to, but usually I don't like it. Yeah. But if it's a girl I really want to see, then I'll just tolerate it. But the whole cuckold thing I don't quite get. Now, my man Adam22 from No Jumper is a different animal. Yeah. He had a dude have sex with his wife, and he recently had a, a contest. Where he had a three a dudes competed to have a threesome with yeah. him and his wife. Yeah. He's cool with that. Yeah. That's his thing. That's my friend. It's a different type of love. It's a different type of love. <laughs> it's a different type of love. <laughs> a different type of love, though. Not my thing. But apparently she said that he would force her to find well-endowed black men to have sex with her while he would pleasure himself. And watch this. 
Yeah. It, it was a lot. It was a lot to take that's, in. That's some wild shit. That's some wild shit. Could have called me. Oh, you would you would have smashed? Ooh, I would have knocked Cassie. I would have knocked Cassie ass off. Okay, so so you mean to tell me that you would have sex with Cassie while Puffy is as close I to give, you my, while listen, he jacked off? Listen, I don't. You could keep that concentration going. We didn't flip chicks before. Okay, look, like we call them flippers. Right, being that what the bunch of dudes were just yeah, like a, a train basically. Yeah, yeah, basically a train. Okay. But would a dude be jacking off while while you 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 smash? I mean, shit? sometimes shit. While, while he hitting, you gotta get that bitch you right. Gotta, you, gotta, you know you what I'm saying? So, yeah. So, so it's kind of the same thing. While you wait your turn, it's the same thing. You it's just the same ain't, thing. You just not focus on him. Listen, I've I've, I've admitted this. I've I've had threesomes with a girl and my homie. We'd be on either end. Right. You feel me? So it's, it's so it's, I'm not it's really saying the same I'm totally, thing. I'm totally but, separate from this yeah, thing. It's my really, younger it, day. It's technically the same thing, but it's just in that shit. That nigga getting off on both, you feel me? But yeah, but but see, when I'm doing it, when I not, when I did it, I would try to block the dude out. And and matter of fact, I I, I could nah, even come. That nigga, that, that nigga not even there to me. Right. You seen Cassie? Yeah, she pretty. Man, but I would light her ass. I, up. I've seen her in person. She's actually not that pretty in person. What? She she cute. I gotta see it. I I met her in person. I've been around her. I gotta see it. I mean, granted, granted, she was wearing her clothes and everything. Maybe you know. I mean, I gotta see it. You gotta see it. I gotta see it. So, so if if Diddy called you up during that no, time no, no. and said, "Hey, I want you to come <laughs> sleep with Cassie, have sex with Cassie, but I gotta be there and I gotta do my thing in the room," you would say yes. See, that's that's it's different because that's too much conversation. That's too, too much conversation. Much, you just have to I don't need to know all that. All I need to know is she needs this motherfucker right now. Not all the other shit y'all handle on your own. You feel me? Yeah, I couldn't do it. Yeah, I'd knock her ass off. Yeah, I, I'll tell I'll tell Diddy he needs to leave the room. <laughs> he needs to leave you the gotta, room. You gotta go. How, how you gonna say it, Vlad? So you gotta get the fuck out. <laughs> or I'm leaving. <laughs> One of us gotta leave. I'm the star of the show right now. I'm the star of the show. I'm the star of the show. <laughs> I remember I interviewed Aries about that. He said he don't even like having a mirror in the room because it's too much like another dude is fucking his girl, even though it's him. You know what I'm saying? That's how much he, he can't even do it. I, I I'm the star of the show. I don't need a co-star. Yeah, I ain't lying. I, I, I couldn't do it. Man. I can't handle it. I hit my girl. I'm crazy jealous. I don't even like the motherfucker over my my girl dough. Yeah. So, yeah. I ain't. I don't fuck with it. So you couldn't do what Adam did. Shit, no. Nah. Cause every time I look at you, I'm th- I think about his dick going in you. Yeah. Now I'm mad again. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just getting mad over and over and over. We in a good space. We go out to the movies. I just look at you and I can just get pissed off. Just pissed off. Yeah, shit, no. Well, uh, you have a one-year-old son, and we talked about this last time, uh, a, a, a lesbian couple, a married lesbian couple uh, had, had your baby. Was it was it planned, by the way? I think I asked you this before. I don't remember the answer. No, it wasn't it planned. Wasn't planned. It, just, it just happened. It just happened. And they already had a, a baby themselves. Yeah. So and you and you consider that your child as well, right? Mm-hmm. So you feel like you have two kids. You know what I'm saying? Which is which is cool. I I, I like that. Are you actually with these girls? Uh or do they feel some type of way about this whole Glorilla situation and We didn't got into it out of it for. Oh, they got mad at you. Yeah. Cause it was unexpected. Cause okay. I ain't, I ain't I ain't notified them beforehand. But I was like shit, it was it was just like spur of the moment type, you know what I'm saying? I didn't know I was going to get on her live. I didn't know she going to be alive. Okay. I mean, are you in a relationship with them? At the moment, no, I'm single. You're single? At the moment, yeah. Okay. Ready to mingle. But I have been with them like the past year and something, yeah. Okay. And you know, you actually brought your baby with you, you know? Uh, son, right? Yeah. He's in the other room right now. Got to meet him for the first time. Adorable baby, by the way. Very, very cute baby. Thank you. Did fatherhood change you, though? Yeah. How so? Um, cause I, cause I, I guess I don't know. There's just so many different things. Just like it's more pressure on you. You like you want us to see way more because it's like oh, it's just not about me no more. You know what I'm saying? Stuff right. like that. Yeah. And, you know, I remember we were actually supposed to do the interview yesterday, yeah. but you were like, oh, I got my son. Yeah, because I, I wasn't 
it wasn't like, playing okay, on yeah, that, yeah. It wasn't playing on me for having this week. Yeah. But uh, I did. And then I was like, oh shit. Uh, and then I never brought him down here to Louisiana, so I had to just, you know, do more preparating and planning. Yeah. That's dope though. That's dope. Are you planning to have me more? <laughs> Do you have one on the way right now? <laughs> Why do you ask me that, Blake? Because well, the way you answered that question. Uh, and I know you now. Like you, This is our third, <laughs> third or fourth interview. I know how you answer your questions. Uh, you, you have one on the way, don't you? Nah. Okay. <laughs> I, I don't believe you, but if you do, congratulations. Uh, if you do, congratulations. Yeah. Multiple kids are a great thing, man. Yeah, I got two. You got two. Well, well, hold on. <laughs> hold on. <laughs> hold on. Well, because you, the the couple has their child. No, it's two. Two. So do you have three? Man, listen, I, I, didn't do, I didn't did a lot of integrations. You can't uh, manipulate me to say that I have another child. Okay. <laughs> I have two kids, okay. Farmer and Peyton. <laughs> Okay. All when, right. it, when it changes, I'll let you know, bro. All right. <laughs> Eventually, I guess, you know, you'll let me know if the time is right. But, you know, listen, man, you're young, you know? You try to wish a baby on me right now, dog? I'm not trying. I mean, that's not a bad thing, is it? Huh? Why? It's not a bad thing. It's not like I'm trying to it's just wish stressful. a disease on you. It's a nah, baby. It's a beautiful thing. It's just stressful, bro. I'm not used to caring about nobody. Well, you, so it's just you, been a while of me adjusting it. to that. You know what I'm saying? I'm just yeah, but it's my great. whole way of thinking in life just has changed. That's a good thing, though. Yeah. Well, because like, if you really think about it, the only reason why we're all here is to have babies. No, really, the purpose of any living thing on this earth is to procreate. That's why we are here. But what about the ones who can't procreate? Well. Then you know what's their purpose. I, I, I think that uh, what's their purpose? I think they find a purpose because you're still alive. Well, what is it though? But I, I, I think that on a, gotcha. on a level that's beyond is is bigger than yourself. That's all I'm saying. I'm just saying it's bigger than yourself. Where do you think we go when we die? Oh, I think it's over. I'm not. I'm not Things just pitch black. No thought. That's no. It. Yeah. Just boom. Yeah. Well, what happens when you step on a bug? You think it goes up to bug heaven? I just always, sometimes I'll just be sitting there, I'll be like, damn. So you sit here, you learn all this stuff, you create, you got a conscious, you got a feelings, emotions. Yeah. And when you die, what the fuck happens? Uh, do, you, I, do you go into a long, deep sleep as far as do you keep dreaming? No, you don't dream. A dream requires you to be alive. It requires, you have no brain activity anymore. Yeah. But you know, I I I remember. Okay, do so, you understand what I'm saying? Though? No, I understand exactly. It's what like you're you did, you did all this thinking and learning and all this shit just yeah. to die. And no, I understand what you're where saying. Where does it go? I I I read. Uh, there was this article I read recently. It was this girl who had this um, very serious seizure, right? And for 30 minutes, she, she was dead. She died. She died. Right. Right. And what she said was. It was actually a very peaceful feeling. She felt like she just kind of dissolved. And when people say that death is a part of life, she kind of figured it out right then and there. It just felt natural. And, and I, I remember um, I interviewed this other dude named Kafani. But did she say what was was she saying like she just went out and came back in, or did she? And she came back. But I'm saying they they, they, they ended up you know do the uh, yeah you know like the, I'm saying they shot her back into did life. Did she explain? After the dissolving feeling. No, she said she kind of dissolved. And then suddenly she came back too because they managed to get her heart pumping again. But her heart stopped. Her 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 husband was giving her CPR. So there was a little bit, It was he was keeping her going until the ambulance arrived. And then when they shocked her back into life. But she said she kind of dissolved. And I, I remember I interviewed this other dude, Kafani, this Bay Area rapper who um, was beefing with this dude, Filthy Rich. He decides to go into Filthy Rich's neighborhood and shoot a music video dissing him. And he ends up getting shot up. And um, he's in a wheelchair now. And I remember he died on the way to the hospital and he said it was just peaceful. It just, it wasn't a fear. It wasn't a panic. It was just, he just sort of faded away. And um, we're all going to die. Mm -hmm. You're going to die. I'm going to die. The cameraman going to die. Like, you know... 
are, are, are kids gonna die? Like everyone's gonna die eventually. Man, I just hope it's I a, get Billy Eilish or Carl Ray and um Carl, right, Carl right before you die. Before, right before, way before. Right. I I think it's a natural thing. Now, there's other, you know, some people believe in heaven, yeah. right? I don't. Some people believe in reincarnation. You come back as a animal. I don't want to come back as an animal. Yeah, I, I, that's the Buddhist. Mentality. Yeah, you, you, you have multiple lives. You, you can't fuck no bitches with an animal. You can fuck other animals. <laughs> Shit, some animals be putting oh, it down. Fuck no animal. That's... Well, you're an animal yourself, so it's not like you're fucking an animal. They don't be taking it's no like you would fucking an animal. No, you don't take any blood. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, man. Being a then they be fucking for like thirty seconds. And shit, oh. shit depends on the animal. Some animals yeah. be fucking. See, like monkeys be fucking. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, I I think that whatever you've accumulated is over. Now you can leave a legacy behind. People can still talk about you. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like you and I have created content for this world. So when we're gone, people will still watch my interviews and still listen to your music, you know, for a certain amount of time. Yeah. For, you know, depending on how big we get while we're alive. But I think that what we learned during that time, yeah, I think it's gone. But that's just my personal opinion. Some people feel they they go up to heaven or they go to hell if they do bad things. I don't know, but I don't I don't believe I'm not religious. Mm. I, I'm Jewish, but I'm not religious. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So, I just, uh, what's that? That's how I get it. Yeah, but that, that's just my personal thing, and you know, and I, I also feel like, you know, the, the, this I remember this kind of went sort of viral. I, I I feel like a lot of people they pray for God to give them money because they don't actually want to do the work to actually get the money. Right. You know what I mean? Like I've seen so many Instagram pages where it's like, God's going to put 30,000 in your bank account. Say amen if you believe it. And it's like thousands of people are like, amen, I believe it. Oh, I really need it. I believe it. And it's like, God ain't going to put no damn 30,000 in your account. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's just not going to happen. Yeah. Now you could work to get that thirty thousand. You could get a second job. You could, you know, switch your career. You could, you could, you know, do something to earn that. But it's a whole lot easier to talk to an invisible person every night and say, "Hey, can you please give it to me? I need it." Uh, and I know, man, shit, man. I, I I remember my my ex, man, her mom. You say, oh, I pray for my blessings every night. Every night it's going to come one day. I'm telling you, Vlad. And it's just like it never came. She died in the projects. You know what I'm saying? I get it. I get it. That's just my thing. Um, You've got a few songs that that, uh, that dropped this last time. Uh, the biggest of which is Sideways with Annalie Chopper. Mm -hmm. well, I've interviewed before. Cool dude. Mm -hmm. Me and him actually went at it at one point. For real? Oh, yeah. You, you, you didn't see that? I can't remember. Me and Chopper, I've probably were, seen it, but I me and Chopper were calling each other's all types of bitches on Twitter. <laughs> I think I did shit. I just can't remember. What like two, three years ago? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, I remember because he 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 claimed you know he's into the whole like herbal healing shit. Oh no, when we started doing that. Oh, yeah, okay. and yeah. I was like, I, I remember. I, yeah, I, I said don't... he was full of shit. And he's a steak oil salesman. He got offended, and we kind of started like going back and forth. And then academics got us on the phone, and then we we ended up having a dope ass interview. I think he's a dope artist and a dope person at that uh so you guys do the song sideways and actually samples uh kp and envy swing my way yeah uh, or shorty swing my way um uh, how did that song come together uh dj chose sent over the beat put it together uh i was gonna i was about to put the song out well i teased it and then i was going through my labor troubles of not being able to drop and time went by and by, by. So I'm like, hey, I need a little X fact on it to hit up Chopper. Chopper hit, knocked it out for me fast and uh, dropped it. So did you know Chopper before? Mm-hmm. Okay. I, I, I was Chopper's first uh, feature. Really? Like ever? Yeah. He's from Memphis, Memphis, right? So the first time he ever had a feature, he reached out to you? Okay, so you guys... No, 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 well, I, I reached out to him like, hey, I like what you're doing. With, with. Oh, okay, and he was like, oh, yeah, hop on the song. Yeah, flew into Miami, met, knocked something out. Yeah, man, I like Chopper. And it seems like he keeps getting bigger and bigger kind of every yeah. year. I mean, he's young, so he got a, a good head start. Oh, yeah. So, so all you got to do is keep consistent. No, absolutely. Absolutely. 
But what I started noticing when I started going through your catalog today is that you actually sample a lot of 90s and 2000s songs. Yeah. Uh, Warren G and Nate Dogg, Regulate. Mm -hmm. uh, what was the name of that song that you did? Uh, if you know, like, if you know, like I know, Don't Miss. Don't Miss. Uh, Pretty Ricky, Your Body. Yeah, that's one of my personal favorites. Yep. And that one came up before I had already did the song. When I, when I was hearing the beat, I'm like, man, this sounds like a fire-ass sample could go on here. And so then, I'm like, bam, uh, pretty rigged. So I wrapped everything, sung everything, and I took then I took the sample and put it towards it. Yeah. I mean, are these samples hard to clear? Um, these Because I just named three three songs. They were all big hit songs. Uh, uh, Swing My Way wasn't. And that's because KP, I used uh, KP Num's uh, recording version, so they own that master. Okay. Uh, Regulate, I think, was a was a remake. I don't think you sampled it. Because yeah. it was a girl's voice Yeah. in your version of the song. No, I, I rapped it. Oh, you were? You... I rapped in it, and I think it got a little sample in it. Okay. Uh, that one, I think that one was just a leak. Oh, so you didn't officially put it out? Yeah, no, nah, it's just on YouTube and stuff. Okay. Yeah. Um, and the Pretty Ricky, your body? Pretty Ricky, that one was, was kind of hard. But, uh, pause. <laughs> that one was kind of difficult because uh, it's so many different people uh, who own the song. and uh, yeah. a well, it's a, was it a four-person group? Yeah, and then, you know, never know who didn't sold publishing, who didn't sold just to people. And uh, what, what damn label was it under? I forgot whatever label label it was. It was shut down, oh. and just happened to come back up. Like I think they sold or some. I, I can't remember what label it was. So okay. that was the most difficult part of that one. Um, the easiest one I had us. Uh, I got well on my new album. I sampled Square Biz. Okay, that was surprisingly uh, not difficult. Square Biz, to Square Square Biz. Who who does that? Tina Marie. Tina Marie. There we go. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I, I knew the song. I was trying to remember with the artist. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, I got a sample on, on Say Please. I got a song called Say Please. It's a it's like a seventies or eighties doo bop song. I forgot I forgot the sample, but I know I'm the only person that ever got it cleared. Okay. You actually had that one one of your bigger songs, you kinda do sort of like a, a doo bop. That's what's the one I'm talking about, Say Please. There we go. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's I, was, I, yeah I was listening to that this it's morning. It's a sample inside the background. Got it. From the I guess the beat. Yeah, mm, 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 mm. that's kind of interesting hearing you on something like that because that's mm. not really your your style. But no, I, feel I, like you I, kinda, I see that's the thing. I have, a, it. I, I have so much different type of music. I, yeah. I, I I I make everything. When I say everything, everything, I'm working on country. I got a country song and everything. Like I got all type of stuff that I ain't put out. It's just to be about catching that right time and space to where people are open to it. Yeah. Because right now I could drop a fucking, I got a motherfucking Raid song right now. A what song? A Raid. Like, you know how they be doing that, uh, like more of the Playboy Cardi. Okay. You know, that type of style. So I got yeah. stuff like that, but people are not going to be accepting to it it's just at no random time. Like, you know what I'm saying? So I try to find the right time to put the song out. What's up with you and uh, Rod Wave? Oh, oh. You, 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 had, you had gone on uh, Instagram yeah. saying that, uh, he stopped texting you because you became best friends with yeah. uh, NBA, NBA young boy. I don't even know why. I was on Instagram. Uh, I think somebody asked me about him getting on my project, and I got. I was. I think I was already pissed off about something, and it was just one of the times I had something on my chest. Mm -hmm. uh, but now I got mad love for Rod Wave. Uh, my only problem with him, like we we were cool. You feel me? Like we just stayed. We didn't been on the phone three four hours just talking about life and shit. Really? Before. Yeah. Oh, facts. But now he doesn't hit you back anymore. Yeah, so it's just like, you know, I don't really be fucking with people, so, and, you know, I'm not going to uh, expose our, the nature of our conversation or what we talked about, but there's some things that we didn't talk about that he didn't win against, you know what I'm saying? But I just don't appreciate people if, if I, if, because I don't, like I said, I don't be fucking with people. So if I fuck with you, and I, if I sit on the phone for you, I don't even like talking on the phone. So if I sit on the phone for you three, four hours, like I fuck with you, you feel yeah. me? Yeah. And he just got weird on me, but I mean, I understand, but it's just like, you know? Yeah, I remember me and Tony Ayo were talking about this, right? Like how when you you know you ever read the Forty Eight Laws of Power? Yeah. One of the laws is never take sides. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But in hip hop, I feel like you're always forced to take sides. Yeah. I mean, 
You know what I'm saying? Like, like I said, so, I understand. I'm, I, I'm, I'm not mad about it. I mean, you post, you know what I'm saying? You're right, but, but, but it's, it's like, but, it's the annoying part of hip hop. I just respect it if you, a, 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 I, I respect my food. Tell me. You feel me? Like, like me, for instance, uh, Free Lucha. I fuck with Lucha. Free Thug, I fuck with both of them. Yeah. I was dating Thug's sister. Oh, so, okay. Yeah. So when I met Lucha, I had already got word from his camp that, you know, he wanted to work with me. So when I, I seen him in person, I told him, I'm like, listen, I fuck with you. I don't got nothing against you or, 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 or Thug, but at the end of the day, his sister is the person who I've been going with for a year, and I respect her, so I can't violate her by, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's, cause, that's on some personal, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm a type of person, I'll get to you straight up and forward uh, uh, how I'm feeling or uh, how it's going, you feel me? But I just don't respect the nigga just disappearing on me. Like, damn, nigga. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember. Uh... But I love his music and stuff like that. Like, he was supposed to be on my top, on, on, on top. You talking about Rod Wave? Yeah, I was. Yeah, I, was I, I, I remember time. like when I first met Drake. One of his people ran up on me, and was like, "Yo, why are you talking all that shit about Drake?" And I'm like, "I've never said anything about Drake. Well, I've had some people that have, you know, voiced their opinion. You know, like Charlemagne, but I never said shit about Drake." Well, that's on you too then. And, I, and I'm like, you know how many fucking videos and articles I have praising Drake? You know what I'm saying? Like probably, a, by that point, it was probably like a thousand times mm. that I've said how, how dope Drake is. So you're going to tell me out of the thousand times that I've helped you, helped your man, the, the 10 times that someone says something negative, which is going to happen. Wow. When you're an artist, like you know what I mean, like I Jimmy Carter, he, you know, President Jimmy Carter said, "If you don't want to upset, you know, if you don't want to have hear anything negative about you, don't do anything. Because mm -hmm. if you're gonna do something, people are gonna say something negative about you. So, uh, like the one percent of the time that someone, or half a percent, whatever, one tenth of the percent of the time, someone says something, now we got beef, and you ignore the the thousand times." That I said shit. I mean, sometimes you know, uh, like for him, he he's a busy man in life. You know what I'm saying? Probably, that person could have been acting on their own, just on you know what I'm saying. No, I think Drake. No, I think Drake sent him. No, I'm just, just saying. I'm just saying. You know what I mean? But I'm, I, I'm, I'm just saying. But, but life, life just is about sometimes uh, understanding. You feel right. Me? And, and and but that's the thing. I feel like in hip hop, people are forced to take sides. Yeah. And if you are over here, then you need to just stay over there, according to most people. So you can't, you can't be cool with Lucci and Thug at the same time. I, I'm cool with Lucci. I've interviewed Lucci a few times. I've never interviewed Thug. I've never met him. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I, I rock with Lucci, but I mean, Thug's actually been, I mean, we interviewed uh, his girlfriend, his old girlfriend, and then he hopped in, you yeah. know, during the interview. So he's technically been on Vlad TV. Yeah. So I don't have anything against Thug, but like, why, why, why should I have to take sides over a beef that I got nothing to do with? You know what I'm saying? Like I, yeah. but but I like, that's what happens. I like to keep my new, you know, just to keep it all neutral. But in that circumstance, it was just that was somebody I was dating and I was very close to. Right, so, you know, so you're what just keeping a hundred, so yeah. it doesn't come out later that yeah, you're somehow yeah, yeah. yeah you know going behind his back. But did Lucci have a problem with that or no? No, nah, he 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 told me like you know in school. I told him I'm like in in, in this other circumstances, you know what I'm saying? You know, cool. But I stay out here. I don't like motherfuckers throwing me in their business. You know, I keep it neutral. Whatever you got, but I feel you know. like in hip hop, it's almost impossible. I feel like at a certain level, it it, it ain't it, it'd be looking impossible because some people be trying to hold on to the oh, let me keep this person, let me stay in a good light with this person. You know what I'm saying? Well, like uh, I think I think Lil Dirk said that said that anybody you know because of his situation with King Von and King Von getting killed, he felt like anyone that was somehow associated with that, he he just can't fuck with them. Period. Right. Like you know what I'm saying? Like I, I you know. I, I don't know. I don't know. It, it's, I, I don't know. Like, I, I feel like it just holds hip hop back. Mm. It just ends up being like high school. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you with this clique, well, again, you know, now <laughs> we're enemies, yeah. even though I don't know you. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? Or like, it reminds me of some gang shit. Like, yeah. you know. How, I guess those are different. Roll oh. 60s, the A-Tray's been beefing for 40 years yeah. and well, people don't even is, know when it's over, but there's as beef. As long as you don't disrespect me or or, or, up, or uplift something that disrespect me or somebody I love, I don't give a fuck what you do or who you fuck with. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, shit. Like, well, we've all been waiting for your new album for how many years now? Uh, 14 months. 14 months. And it still hasn't come out. You're on the same label, Sexy Red, Rob 49. Yeah. And I guess there's some drama with the label. Yeah. We're cleaning up now, though. So is there an album coming out soon? Yeah. Because you have, what, like a thousand songs tucked away somewhere? I got like two, three hundred. Two, three hundred songs. Talk to like if, if I were to tell you right now, we gotta drop the album today. Pick your fifteen best songs. Would you feel like it's ready to drop right yeah. now? So you you got yeah. the songs, the features. Yeah, it's like it's like then I got my, it's, it's like then come out now, finally. Okay. Yeah. Is, is there a date? The nineteenth. The nineteenth of January. Oh, that's yeah. right around. That's well, three weeks away. Yeah. It's supposed to be on November tenth, but you know. So was... three weeks away, you got the album's coming out. So by the time this interview comes out, the rollout's going to start to begin. Yeah. What's the name of the album? Yes, I'm sad. Yes. Okay. We we talked about this before. So the the, the album title is the same. Mm-hmm. Okay. Damn, this has been that long. Fuck. Well, we interviewed like ten months ago. Yeah. Yeah, it was like February. Nah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> you did. You're right. You're right. You're right. Right. Yeah. February. Mm-hmm. And yeah, and you said yes. I'm the sad. only difference is uh, like some of the songs I leaked was uh supposed to be on there. Okay. Who are the features on it? Uh, I got Rick Ross. Okay. Rob Four Nine. Okay. Uh, Treated. She from New Orleans, and of course Chopper. The uh, the Southway song. Yep. Kevin Gates. Kevin Gates. Okay. That's it. Mm-hmm. Or there's some other ones you're not. Nah, that's it. I really didn't want nobody on the, but. It's just all you. I got so much music that it's just. <laughs> Is it all all the same producer or you got other producers? Uh, mostly produced by Hard Body. Uh. Uh, my my in house right. DJ chose yeah. hard by the hero, um, DJ be real. I got Tego on there, Tay Keith. Um, oh, Tay Keith did some shit. Yeah, I think. Oh. Um, people, I got a couple people on there. You know, you know something, man. Like Tay Keith. I, I I just feel like Tay Keith is is the most genius. Producer, yeah, out we, uh, there. we was talking about doing a, a whole project together. That'd be amazing. Yeah, Just like trying to find the time to for Tay Keith to see the vision of Sexy Red. Yeah, I mean, I've been I've been following Sexy Red for a long time. Okay, well, first time I saw Sexy Red was when she had a leash around her neck in the the Chopper video. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what I first time. saw. That's the first nah, time I saw. I've but you, you were up on her before. Yeah, but she's I, on the same label as you. So yeah. not nah, before that. She, before that, yeah, when she had a song called Chicken Head. Okay. Yeah, you can play a little clip of that. Uh, okay, because when I, when I first heard, um, Pound Town, yeah, and like I mean she she's rapping kind of offbeat, but it but it works, right? Yeah, because you know I mean look, I, I used to produce, so you know that it's very easy to push around vocals and get it yeah completely on beat, yeah. but he chose to have it kind of a little off mm-hmm. stylistically. You know, you know, like my son need a new pappy. Like you know, what I'm saying like all these little cut with the visuals and everything else like that. And you know, I mean, she she's cute, but she's not like traditionally like the female rapper. She's not like a Trina or like a Nicki Minaj. She she has her own kind of unique sort of look. Right. For Tay Keith to see that, I feel like before anyone else did, is just like brilliant to me. I knew I knew Pound Town was gonna go soon as I heard that. Oh really? I I I didn't the think The beat so. yeah, the beat was cold as a motherfucker, but then like I you like you could just hear the catchphrase mm, 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 around like oh shit, yeah, all, every female about to be saying this. Yeah, I mean uh, for, I think for, like so I'm gonna tell you the thing. Sasha Red is a lot of these females spiritual animal. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Like they she's the side of them that they they wanna like that, that chick that's working as a nurse and the chick that's working in a law firm and stuff that who can't really show too much, she decided them that they wish they could just go run outside butthole naked and 
and be ratchet and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Look, I, I remember I was talking to Boosie about this, right? And I'm like, I'm really surprised that Sexy Red, pregnant, is still performing with her stomach out, like in half tops. Yeah, the stomach out, he goes, I mean, well, then, but he was like, but, but this is, that's the hood chick. A hood chick is going to keep the baby and keep her career going. Yeah, right. Like, you know, most regular chicks would either get an abortion or they'd be like, okay, I'm just going to sit this one out for the next, you know, year while I get big, have the baby recover. Nah, she going to keep performing, keep doing shows and have her stomach out and use that as, as part of her thing. And it's like, yo, that, like, you got to just respect it. Mm. You're watching it happen in real time. Yeah. Do you know her personally? Yeah. Okay, but what's your personality like in person? Same, know, she, same thing yeah, that you see. Yeah. She a little more laid back a little bit, but that's how, that's how she is. Sex tape came out, didn't phase her at all, kept it moving. Yeah, crazy. Mm. Yeah, she's gonna be performing until she's eight months and 29 days pregnant. <laughs> she might have the baby on stage. <laughs> I, I, put it, I bet she's gonna have the baby on stage. Nice though. She's going to break, her water's going to break right there on stage. She's probably going to have like a little doula or something with her on tour just in case this happens. She's going to get every last penny. That's my prediction. Remember this. Play this back when this happens. Yeah. She's not going to take any time off. So you're not surprised that she blew up at all. Because uh -uh. she's entertaining. That's what this industry is. All she did was the right beat, right beat and the right exposure. Right, she's on Drake's new album. Right, catch the shit. She's on Drake's new album. She was on tour with Drake. Yeah. I think what Rolling Stone said, like, Ski's, like, the, the, the biggest, the number one rap song of the year or some shit like that. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta hand it to her, man. You gotta hand it to her. Um, Last question. Last time you said that uh, you were making about a million dollars a year the last few years. You actually said you call it Money Man for a business advice. Yeah. Me and me, Money Man are supposed to do an interview. We actually had a plan and then he had to like finish up his album. We're still supposed to do it. And he he's really big on investments. He's big on crypto and stuff like that. Have you invested at all? Um, certain areas. But not really. No, not really. You need to start. Yeah. Let, let me tell you something. I, I, I'm, I think about this all the time right now. Ryan Leslie, you know what that is? That was Cassie's boyfriend before Diddy stole her away. Yeah. He said at the start of his career, he put a hundred thousand dollars. He had a financial, he had like a like a mentor who said, Listen, take all the money you got right now, which was about a hundred thousand at the time, put it into Apple. He put it into Apple. But that was different times. Apple. Man, there's always an apple that's coming up. So let me just finish my story, right? He put 100000 into Apple. At one point, it went up three and a half times. He had $350,000. He said, hey, man, listen, I'm going to cash out. I'm going to get my mom something nice, whatever. Three and a half, 300, you know, 350% return is major. You know, uh, my Google stock, I've made something like that. And it's, it's impressive when it happens. And his mentor said, okay, you could do that if you want, but if you do that, I'm not going to talk to you again. We're done. So figure out a way to get your mom something nice with some other money. But if you cash this out, we're done. Do you know how much that Apple investment is worth right now? 16 million. It went up 16 times. Mm -hmm. In your 20s, if you put in a chunk of money into a good company that does well year after year, decade after decade, by the time you are my age, you'll be sitting on tens of millions of dollars. There is literally thousands of companies that you, that you could do this with right now that this will happen with. Shout out to Lil Bibby. Ask Lil Bibby how many millions he's made off of using the same type of strategy. He invested in Apple also early. Not because I told him to, but I just showed him overall how this shit works. And he just went off and did it on his own. He's done great with it. So all I'm saying is, you know, yeah, it's cool to gamble on sports teams and stuff like that, but 
this is a different type of thing. And when you look at most billionaires, most of the people on the Forbes list, the majority of their wealth comes from stocks. Either public stocks or stocks in their own company. But the majority of them comes from stocks. Real estate, yeah, people have real estate. People have a chunk of money. They might have some properties here and there. Yeah, they might have some money in crypto here and there. But the majority of their money, including the Jay-Zs and everything, it all comes from stocks. That's my, that's my, that's my take on that. So think about that in your 20s. I, I wish I'd put, I could invest in Apple early too, but I didn't, I didn't think that after Steve Jobs died, it was going to do all that well. My dumb ass. I wish I'd put more money in Apple. I actually don't own any Apple. But I, I tell you this, when I first started investing, like if I would have said the fucking Amazon beginning, I would have. I own a, you know I, I own a ton of Amazon. Yeah. I own a ton of Google. I haven't sold any of my Google stock. I've owned Google since 2010 and never sold it and kept buying more whenever it dipped. I could, I could, I could live off my Google stock probably for the rest of my life. I, I could shut down Vlad TV right now, my Google stock. See, my Google, my Amazon, and my Tesla stock, I could, I could probably retire right now if I wanted to. Just putting it out there, man. You, you, you're in your 20s now. Your 50s will come sooner than you think. No. Seriously. You think it's a long time away? It'll, it'll go by quick. And, and I wish I had known the shit I'm telling you now. I wish I had known it back then. To turn 100,000 into 16 million. He didn't rob nobody. He didn't get a, a secret insider tip. Anyone in the world could have bought Apple stock. It was a public stock. It was a company. Everyone knew about it. Everyone had iPhones back then. Mm. It wasn't a secret. It wasn't a this tip that someone told him. It was like, oh, invest in this little company that only I know about, and it's going to blow up. Nah, it's a company that every, it was a it was a household name since the 80s. Apple? Yeah. For real? Yeah. I didn't know that. Apple's been... Apple computers have been around since the 80s. I, I definitely yes. didn't know that. App, Apple was the first personal, popular personal computer. First Apple computer I seen was in like 2000 and I want to say three. Apple computers used to be in my school in the 80s. The white, uh, little white yeah. fat laptop. It's been around forever. Uh, it's been around forever. Tell me. That's where we're going to end it, man. Fredo Bang, man. Always a pleasure when we link up. And we're doing it in uh, Louisiana right now, which I think makes it extra special. Yeah. yeah you know what I mean? Yeah. You got some food out there yet? Yeah. Commander's Palace, one of my favorite restaurants. Period. You know what I mean? I've been eating gumbo out here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I've been eating po' boys. I've been eating uh, Oysters Rockefeller. Yeah, it's just some beignets. Beignets, yep. I hit up Cafe Dumont, you know. Got my sugar rush with that. I've been hitting up uh, man, a bunch of places. Get my fried shrimp. Yeah. All that, man. Took my swamp tour. All that. Mm -hmm. Till next time, man. Peace.